Hey everybody, welcome on in to SJ Games Live. We're starting a little bit early today to uh, sort of get everything rolling and talk to you a little bit before the big kickoff of the Munchkin Big Box campaign that happens in about 24 minutes over on Backer Kit. Um, but thank you all for joining us. i uh, see more of you than usual, so thanks for coming in. Uh, I know a lot of people have joined the Discord in the last couple of days because um, you saw the link over on the Munchkin Big Box uh, campaign. So welcome on in. We're happy to see you there. Uh, I'm Jimmy. I'm the host of the live stream most days. Uh, we have Revka here with us. Hi guys. She joins us fairly often to talk and play and do things. And behind the camera, we have, as always, Brandon running the show Woo! with a lot more windows <laughs> than usual today to keep track of everything. So bear uh, bear with us if we see a couple extra in between screens yeah. because we're doing a lot of extra stuff today. Yes, we are very excited for our big box launch. We are. <laughs> uh, Brandon has dropped you a whole bunch of links over on the side if you want to know what you're hearing or what you're seeing or go to our Discord. Um, so what we're going to do in the, the lead up here is we're going to go into a little bit of uh, Munchkin nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stuff, some of the early days things uh, we've got Primarily what we're going to be looking at is uh, the Munchkin book here, which is something we put out in 2015? Something like that. It's been a minute. <laughs> I believe this was a 2015 book, um, or early 2016, possibly. But most of, most of the materials were written in about 2015. And this is just a companion book with a lot of different essays uh, from various people in the industry or around about Munchkin. Yeah. And I uh, grabbed a couple of things I think are going to be fun to to hear from some people in there, uh, and a couple stories. So one, I'm going to start because I, I mentioned it and Repka hasn't heard of it. No. Uh, so in, <laughs> in Munchkin, one of the cards in the core set is the gazebo, which you must face alone. Yes. Because you must face, no one will help you against the gazebo. Uh, we have a big gazebo out back in our, uh, between our office and our warehouse. It's where we take a lot of our breaks and everything when we're doing outside breaks. Mm -hmm. uh, and occasionally for some times of the year, we even at one point had big eyes we put on it so it matched the gazebo <laughs> from the card. Um, but Revka did not know, and some of you might no. not know, that the story of the gazebo is actually uh, predates Munchkin by a fair bit. Uh, it is a story yeah. from the, the days of your in role playing. I did um, not. The only thing I knew is that there was a failed attempt at a Munchkin Tower that I saw my dad was trying to build at one point. That was like a gazebo. Like, oh, he was trying to design a laser cut yeah, dice tower. He was yeah. trying to design a laser cut <laughs> dice tower, and it was just in pieces. Failed, poor thing. Yeah, they, they took several runs at that. Yeah, that um, was about as far as my gazebo knowledge goes. <laughs> so so the tale of... If you, if you look this up on the internet, you want to Google the tale of Eric and the Dread Gazebo. But uh, uh, is this from a, a role-playing session in the early 70s? So early, early on, uh, and Eric, uh, one of the participants, uh, plays something like a, a computer. When he games, he methodically considers each possibility before choosing his preferred option. Given time, he'll invariably, play, invariably pick the optimal solution. It's been known to take weeks. He's otherwise, in all respects, a superior gamer. Eric is playing a neutral paladin in Ed's game, and he was on some lord's land when the following exchange occurred. And Ed is the GM, and Eric is the player in this, in this uh, scenario. Ed. You see a well-groomed garden. In the middle, on a small hill, you see a gazebo. A gazebo? What color is it? Uh, it's white, Eric. How far away is it? About 50 yards. How big is it? Pause. It's about 30 feet across, 15 feet high, with a pointed top. I use my sword to, det to detect good on it. It's not good, Eric. It's a gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> I call out to it. It won't answer. It's a gazebo. <laughs> I sheath my sword and draw my bow and arrows. Does it respond in any way? No, Eric, it's a gazebo. I shoot it with my bow. Roll to hit. What happened? There is now a gazebo with an arrow sticking out of it. <laughs> it wasn't wounded? Of course not, Eric. It's a gazebo. <laughs> but that was a plus three arrow. It's a gazebo, Eric. A gazebo. If you really want to try to destroy it, you could try to chop it with an axe, I suppose, or you could try to burn it. I don't know why anybody would even try. It's a gazebo. Eric, long pause. He has no axe or fire spells. I run away. <laughs> the GM thoroughly frustrated. It's too late. You've awakened the gazebo. It catches you and eats you. <laughs> Eric, reaching for his dive. Maybe I'll roll up a fire using mage so I can avenge my paladin. <laughs> At this point, the increasingly amused fellow party members restored a modicum of order by explaining to Eric what a gazebo is. Thus ends the tale of Eric and the Dread Gazebo. 
could have been worse. At least the gazebo wasn't on a grassy knoll. This is so. So that is the that is the origin of the gazebo story uh, <laughs> and legend that has passed down through the years in in fantasy role playing circles. <laughs> and where it comes to where, where the gazebo in Munchkin uh, comes from, that lore in in D and D lore. It feels very much like a Leroy Jenkins situation where it just perpetrated into infinite <laughs> that we didn't realize that was what it was coming from. Yes, yes. So it's definitely that that sort of scenario. Uh, all hell launch day. Welcome on in. Hell is that Steve day. cackling off screen? No, that that's Brandon cackling off screen. Uh, we had Steve <laughs> in last week to do the pre-launch on this, um, but he's he's not in the studio today. Uh, he might be cackling somewhere. I'm sure uh, he, he is. I'm sure had heard that story many a time. Sure. We are also very excited for the launch. Yes, we are. <laughs> welcome in Bethu. Welcome in Coffee at Joe's. Welcome in your butt. <laughs> you. The, na the names on Twitch are always entertaining. I, well, I mean, I can't really say anything. Mine's just my name <laughs> on Twitch, so. So I want to go ahead and uh, go into a couple of things we've got here. Um, so in the Munchkin book, one of these essays is by Steve, and it's called Munchkin by the Numbers. Uh, and this is a, a breakdown in several different categories of, of numerical things about, about Munchkin and its history. Um, and so we're taking mostly from the uh, the early days section of it. How much will it cost? We're going to go into all the details of the big box at 2 o'clock once the project launches. Yeah. Um, so hang tight with us for about uh, 17 more minutes. So in Munchkin by the Numbers, there's a couple things that, that Steve mentions. I'm going to break these up. We're just pulling a few of these out here. But the year in which I started writing the card game that would become Munchkin, 2000. I thought it'd be fun to do a parody of a bad dungeon crawl. The goal was to write a silly, fast-playing game about killing monsters and taking their stuff. Um, the year in which I first realized Munchkin would be a direct would be a hit. Definitely not 2000. I had no idea how big this thing would get. No idea at all. Uh, date and zip code of the first game of Munchkin ever. July 14th, 2000. 85250. And we used those hand-drawn cards. Monica and I played with a group of the Men in Black, our company demo team, including cell leader Jesse Foster at a Hexacons Hotel in Scottsdale. We had fun. A lot of games don't survive the first playtest, and this one came through with flying colors and lots of yelling and giggling. A uh, number of cards totally nuked in the first playtest. One, the Derby of Death Defiance proved to be a nearly pointless piece of headgear because all it did was keep you from dying, and dying was no big deal. I suppose we could put it back in with a big bonus, and the don't die is a minor side effect. Uh, let's see. Stock number, 1408. The 14 meant small box games, and 08 came after 07, so no, it wasn't a significant stock number. We had no idea that Munchkin would turn into their most successful line ever. If we had, we would have gotten more interesting stock number, like OMG0001. Um, <laughs> Sometimes we really do manage to assign stock numbers that mean something, like Zombie Dice is 131313, and the designer's edition of Ogre is 1977, for the year the game was originally released. Uh, one significant stock number in the Munchkin series, 1503. That's Munchkin Apocalypse. Can you figure out why it's significant? He does not elaborate, so I'll leave that to you to figure out. Ooh, maybe the chat will know. Maybe the chat will know. Does anybody in chat know? Hello, John. I saw you. We just it off. <laughs> I see you, John. Welcome back to the Army of Darkness. Is the games welcome in, Terry? Welcome in. Why not waiting something, wasting time here for something I can't afford? Anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and go into all the details of the project in just a little bit. My daughter loves playing Munchkin, so she's so excited to get this in play. First time I actually got to stream on time to stream or launch. I don't know why March 2015 is significant. No. Uh, it could be 1503. It's, it's not even necessarily March. Uh, let's see, print statistics, the ship date of the first printing of Munchkin, July 16th, 2001. Uh, quantity of the first printing, 5,000. No, it wasn't nearly enough. So the second printing took less than six <laughs> months later. We had time we did 10,000, that wasn't enough either, so we kept ordering more copies. It continues to sell. It continues to sell. As, as of this writing, which was 2015, uh, number of printings so far, 29. And that's just the English version of the base game of Munchkin. Uh, quantity of the largest printing of the base Munchkin set, again, as of 2015, uh, 130,000. 
Last minute editing note as this book's heads off to print, the 29th printing has arrived, is being shipped, and the 30th printing is on the schedule. A <laughs> uh, number of languages Munchkin's been translated into. 17, with one more on the way. Right now it's available in Dutch, Chinese, simplified and traditional. Uh, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Hebrew, Hungarian, Italian, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, and Ukrainian. Japanese and Korean editions are out of print at the moment, and Czech is coming. Uh, a lot of these other numbers are <laughs> over a, de are a decade old, so we're going to go ahead and not go into all of those exactly. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure some of the languages they uh, no longer make as well. Uh, that is Brandon. <laughs> someone laughing off camera, that's Brandon. Uh, he, he is uh, the producer. He's running all the all the tech behind the screen for us and swapping things over and focusing cameras and doing all the hard work but rather than just slow. sitting out here talking. Brandon says hi. Uh, let's see. Oh, a little bit. Art is the noise a seal makes. <laughs> Number of cards John Kavalik has drawn. Again, as of 2015, over 5,000. We'll ask him in a little bit how many he's done since then. Um, that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is almost 10 years, like nine and a change years old. Yeah. Uh, number of custom cards. Number of different versions of the Munchkin figure that's appeared on the box cover. Four all drawn by John. Is it the four after the uh, guest artist editions? Uh, I think this is all before guest artists. I think those were started in 2017. Yeah. But I'm sure there's been uh, significantly more here's since one. then. Weight of the Munchkin mascot costume, 68 pounds. Uh, so that was a while ago. We had a we had a Munchkin mascot costume made that we jammed Randy into for some appearances and stuff <laughs> uh, at conventions. And then uh, we, we used that for a couple of years. And then um, we uh, sold that off to Pegasus Publishing, who had an interest in using it. Because we were kind of done using it appearances but they wanted to continue to use it for things so we sold it to them so it made its trip over to germany to continue being the munchkin mascot over there gotcha. but it was it was a heavy like sports mascot style munchkin costume wow. that uh, uh the only thing i've even known about the costume is that, that we have that the hat the helm his helm yeah spike's helm still exists somewhere in the office and that a replica of the axe still the battle axe still exists in the office. that wasn't the helm for the costume it was it was one we had several we had at one point uh we had three custom foam pieces made uh there was the unnatural axe which is hanging in there but part of the tails of it are getting a yeah. little wobbly the helmet which i wouldn't put on my head anymore because it is it is the uh, uh latex covered foam stuff so the over the years those outer layers, especially in, in the sun and things, start to get brittle. Yeah. The third thing that we made uh, was the oh, chainsaw the bloody dismemberment, which oh, is exactly right behind you. <laughs> I didn't even see it. So we we did make the chainsaw bloody dismemberment, and you can see it. It's uh, it has dehydrated it has and cracked for a bit. Better day. It, is, it has been better days. It has been This is all I'm trying not to squeeze it too hard because it's not nearly as soft as it used to be. Yeah. But uh, we did make this and the unnatural axe. This one is probably the one that is held up the best because it's no, it doesn't have any really small mm -hmm. uh, segments on it. Um, but yeah, these these hang out in our lobby so yeah. that they're still there for decorations and stuff. It does still look good on camera, that's for sure. It looks pretty good, yeah. A, a close-up shot, you'd, you'd see a little bit of the weathering and stuff going on on it, but yeah. I wanted to at least bring the one that I was well, sure it wouldn't be uh, breaking if we moved it. The uh, unnatural axe is still around in the warehouse. Um, I know that there are pictures of me holding it from Halloween on the Daily Eliminator. So if you want to take a look at it, it's in the ether somewhere. I yeah. don't know what I, I day that was, but... I didn't want to move it too much because it was a little... Yeah. Parts of it were a little flimsy and I was afraid they might break it was very, it too much. It was very tentative to hold, but it was... I was told that I looked like flower for Halloween. And so they, they're like, you have to hold the axe and take a picture. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I took, it's on the Daily Illuminator if you want to go find it. Oh. <laughs> uh, extra name for food. Uh, whatever it came here. How many people are employed at the office? Uh, we have, uh, depending on the, the, the year or time, mm -hmm. uh, we've got between 30 and 50 people that work for Steve Jackson Games. Yeah. Uh, a good, well, before the pandemic, a good, around half of those were remote people. Yeah. And now most of us work remotely, even if we're local to Austin. Mm -hmm. um, like I come in, Brandon and I come in to do the stream every week. 
Aroka's in many days because she's in the warehouse. I'm in work. daily because I'm, I'm in the I'm in the warehouse. Where so. else are working with our 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 facility stuff like the laser yeah. cutter or the 3D printers and things like that. I'm the um, on-site maker. <laughs> so so we have a, but we that's that's about how many people and that's not just munching that is all of our products and everything yeah. our accounting people our management people marketing uh, marketing mm -hmm. everybody. Um, and then there's the are people who help us with certain projects and stuff like that that aren't necessarily like consistently on yeah we have a lot of people who aren't staff but they work with us like you know authors yeah. who write authors and artists and and uh editors who do mm -hmm. work you know contract work for us on different projects mm -hmm. uh things like that all right let's see uh in munchkin department no that's the sj games office yeah um, we the munchkin department we there's no one works really on one game here yeah. Um, we're not that big a company. No. Um, we all work on many, many different things. Like when Brandon and I are doing this, we run the IT department. Uh, when Ripka's not on here, she is doing uh, shipping. And I'm um, also technically my other official uh, title is head STL assistant, so I help out our STL uh, art director. Yeah, as do, well, doing so. prototyping and yeah. And, you, and with a laser cutter, you do prototyping for some other games and yeah. stuff for us. Yeah. So yeah, like everybody does a lot of things here. We all wear many hats. <laughs> uh, so here's another story uh, from one of the, the uh, introductions of the Munchkin book from James Lauder. Uh, I'm going to jump through part of it. But he was talking about, uh, so he, he's talking about this, about um, getting introduced to Munchkin himself. And uh, he, was, he was working <laughs> up a, a story about uh hobby games oh, i was doing a book hobby games the best 100 and he was he was talking to a couple people and someone uh that he was trying to get to what was not gonna be finishing some essays but was giving him some ideas had rattled off, rattled off munchkin and he kind of put it off and got ribbed like i bet you haven't even played it that much um and we're gonna pick up there uh oh i was aware of munchkin from the moment designer steve jackson and artist john cavallic unleashed it upon the world in 2001 it would have been impossible for me to miss its debut. I was working extensively in the hobby game market at the time, and Munchkin's launch was a noteworthy event in that little corner of the publishing industry. The course set recorded very strong initial sales, and more importantly, inspired a vocal fan base, the beginnings of which would become a veritable crusading army of players eager to spread the word of Munchkin's glories. The course set subsequently went on to capture the Origins Award that year for Best Traditional Card Game, a critical affirmation to go along with all the popular success. So it was pretty clear to everyone paying the least bit of attention that Steve Justin Games had a hit upon something big. Given the creators involved, I should have been one of the Munchkin's early adopters. Steve Justin's designs hold a prominent place in my gaming history. I got into the hobby in the late 1970s through role-playing games such as Dungeons and & Dragons and Villains and & Vigilantes, and relatively obscure board games such as Eon's Cosmic Encounter, but early in my gaming life I also faced annihilation between, beneath the treads of a gigantic robot tank and Steve's war game Ogre. <laughs> uh, Vied for secret control of the world through his card game Illuminati and blasted my way across the post-apocalyptic future in the classic vehicle, vehicular combat game Car Wars, which Steve designed with Chad Irby. Later, I became a fan of SJ Games' role-playing system, GURPS, and its wonderfully researched supplements, which covered topics as wildly diverse as Imperial Rome and the paranoid cult TV series The Prisoner, Miskatonic University, and the Scarlet Pimpernel. Shortly before Munchkin's release, Steve even hired me to serve as an editorial ringmaster for a book of RPG villains dreamed up by GURPS fans. My admiration for John, artist John Cavallic's work runs just as deep. I've been an avid follower of the comic strip Dork Tower, which chronicles the lives and loves of a cadre of gamers in the fictional town of Mud Bay, Wisconsin, since shortly after its debut. In the late 1990s, it started popping up in a few of the hobby-themed magazines, for which I occasionally wrote, before I knew it. Dork Tower was my first destination when opening up a new issue of Dragon and Shadows. I faithfully followed the strip since then, and John transitioned it first to comic book form, then to a webcomic. And there are his stealth projects, like providing the charming Apple illustrations for the best-selling game Apples to Apples. You can also stumble across John's work outside of gaming in such little red markets as the New York Times and Rolling Stone. <laughs> so I should have been an easy sell for fantasy gaming-themed card game by Jackson Kavalik, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't, though. Looking back, it's difficult for me to pin down exactly what stopped me from picking up Munchkin at my local hobby shop. I sometimes find screw your neighbor designs frustrating. I also recall feeling a bit overwhelmed by the number of supplements and new base sets that followed hard on the heels of the core's game, core game's release. It's always a challenge to sort out which add-ons are necessary to fully enjoy a game once a series really begins to take off. 
There was Munchkin's theme, too. I spent the first few years of my publishing career working on, among other things, The Forgotten Realms, a setting often criticized by narrative-focused hobbyists as a haven for power gaming munchkins. I couldn't imagine a way to make the generally painful right way to play an RPG debate entertaining, even as a spoof. The art was the first thing that struck me when, prompted by Dave Arneson's insightful observation, I finally bought an unboxed munchkin. John's drawings were charming as expected, and packed with knowing nods to gaming culture. Essays in this collection reference a story behind the gazebo monster card, for example. <laughs> the illustrations were also narratively evocative, to borrow a phrase from academia. Which, that means there's a story implied in such cards as pretty balloons, sleep potion, and out to lunch. Events that led to moments of conflict they capture, or the inevitably bad consequence of those frozen actions. Those cursed cards are especially rich in suggested story. I don't know about you, but I'd like to hear the tale that resulted in the chicken perching on your head, and ju the, of the justifiably annoyed thief, or the seagull where he freed himself from the poultry pompadour. As I looked a little deeper, Steve's text did par its part to keep the mood light even while fleshing out the game's setting. Professional courtesy, we learn, prevents lawyers from attacking a thief, though there's more than happy to slap anyone else with the injunction that allows all the other munchkins at the table to rob them of a card. Many times, the text cuts right to the point, but in a way that begged for a more detailed explanation. You should know better than to pick up a duck in a dungeon. Munchkins and their minders are admonished when the Duck of Doom curse card comes into play. As with the head-sitting chicken, players surely wonder about the ducks that apparently roam the munchkin dungeons in great numbers, punishing anyone who foolishly handles them. As for the game itself, conflict is central to Munchkin, to be certain, but the text and the art both friend conflict is such a funny, friendly way that players must laugh their way through it. As I noted earlier, I'm not a fan, huge fan of Screw Your Neighbor designs. My wife is downright opposed to them. The kind person that she is, she would much have much more fun with Tile and Carcassonne if it were an exercise in cooperative map building, not a contest where players occasionally direct the river into the courtyard of a rival's unfinished setup. <laughs> Yet she and I and our teenage son can all agree on Munchkin when Family Night rolls around. We play it with only good-natured clashes. That's an impressive feat Munchkin pulls off there. The secret, in the, the secret is in the design. Each new base set takes a genre and captures its essence. Steve and John and Munchkin's R. Andrew Hacker toss all of the note, genre's notable examples into the hopper and distill them down to a set of tropes and trappings that can be rendered in miniature on a 3 and 8 by 2 and a quarter inch cards. On their own, the cards are delightful and amusing, but the real power becomes apparent during play. They shape the story being told around the gaming table by providing touchstones that cheerfully remind players of the genre's greatest hits. The cards identify the central and smile-worthy elements of a zombie yarn or a fantasy dungeon crawl or a martial arts epic, depending on what player of Munchkin you play selected. It's the players who connect to those fragments. Their laughter and their frantic negotiations, and yes, even their conflict, fill the spaces between the cards. Their play sweeps up all the disparate tropes and characters and bits of the setting and gives them life as part of a new, unified tale. The exact composition of that tale, the nature of the heroes involved, and the way the combat goes down... Whether the tube of charm works as the magic intended, or the curse strips the munchkin of the fabled instrument at just the wrong time, depends on the assembled players. Everyone brings a different perspective to the table, after all. Given that, and the endless combination of available cards, no two munchkin sessions are ever going to be exactly the same. So that is someone who, who was originally not necessarily uh, finding themselves intrigued until they got into it and actually got the gameplay going with a bunch of people around the table enjoying the silliness that is munching because you can't really take it too seriously it's all the right final it's the final count. where do i throw well keep throwing money at the screen <laughs> what all right so we are about to get this launched which means daryl who is not in the office but is uh somewhere else probably about to push a button on the uh backer kit side oh um we're about 15, 15 seconds out seconds. Da, 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 da. we'll see if daryl's watches the same as ours I saw him in the chat. I think he's in here. <laughs> hey! It's automatic and scary. <laughs> we don't have to push timer, a button, right? <laughs> well, depends we'll still on what be here when we get back. So go make that phone call. Come back. <laughs> backer kit's launch is oh oh it's a oh, zero. It's so zero now. Oh. Are we live? Happening. Did it do the thing? <laughs> it's slowly loading. Oh God. In my browser, anyway. <laughs> I have I've all tabs open, though, so that might have yeah. something to do with it. The Project Launch Committee. Project Launch hey! Committee. Thank you to our first backer. There we go. And now, now everyone who's on backer can, ah! can see us as well, I think. Bear hug! Yes. I think. My, my browser's still loading it, so. Mine loaded, and I had to pause it, so I didn't get horrible delays. <laughs> you, know you want seven audio sources in no, your I don't want to listen to seven audio oh, okay. sources. Look at you guys. Go, oh my gosh. There's 36 backers, 47. 
Thank you so much, guys. We love seeing these numbers. It really shows that you guys care about what we're doing. So and, now uh, that the launch is here, Munchkin Big Box on Backer Kit, we'll start talking about what is going to be in it. Do we want to go with our slides or? Uh, well, let's let's uh, yeah, let's show the let's show the main one. The main slide. The main slides. Okay, let me switch over. Top so hundred the, already. Wow. Here's the Woo-hoo. here's the Munchkin Big Box, huge box with card organizer. Um, so it's going to have everything in here so you're going to have over 650 cards in here uh, all illustrated by john including the munchkin core set munchkin 2 unnatural acts munchkin 3 clerical errors munchkin 6 double dungeons so you get the dungeon mechanic thrown into the into the uh set uh munchkin bosses so you get the boss monster mechanic which has some altered endings uh to the game in there yes uh much dungeons add uh part group wide effects that everyone's in the same dungeon so basically made uh gives the same effects to everybody in the dungeon um munchkin side quests and side quest 2 which add another element to the game where you can pick up and go on side quests that can get you closer to victory uh the box is designed to hold over 2,000 cards and game accessories so you'll hold a whole bunch of stuff in here uh with dev- card dividers that are uh illustrated Yes, they are illustrated. We can finally say that out loud now. <laughs> They're illustrated, but they have a spot for you to write on the divider yes. what the section is. So you can decide which divider is which. Uh, 14 illustrated card dividers, one game board, which is the main game board there, uh, a sideboard to hold the dungeons, bosses, and side quest cards, six different dice in different colors, two kilometers for tracking your monster and character levels, a redesigned consolidated rulebook, 12 colored standees, Six male, six female, so you can track which things your curses have launched you into. Yeah. A playable bookmark, a collector's edition spike enamel pin. Ooh, I haven't seen that one yet. Scroll back up right now. Yeah, oh, wait, wait. Pin. Go back up to the pin. Go up to the pin. Uh, oh, he's oh, so cool. cool. I like that. I haven't seen him yet. Uh, and then Munchkin stickers as well. Do we know the size of the Munchkin D6? Are, we're talking about the ones in... In the big box? The D6, is that what yeah. the question is? Uh, I don't know. I don't have a millimeter count. We'll have to see if Daryl has that information on what how many millimeters that D6 is. In the um, big box, yes. Okay. Um, I imagine now, it's going to be standard. Because but... we're early on and in the first uh, five minutes still, I'm going to point out that the first 1,750 of you that back this, if we can go back to us on camera and real I, quick, Brandon. I love seeing all of your guys' pledge numbers. That is totally awesome. I know we're up to 400 and something is the last I saw. So the first 1,750 of you that back this are going to get this Munchkin die, but no, which is the, the colossal D10 Munchkin die. Uh <laughs> Daryl's already said you guys are going so fast. He's got to get a poll prepared for the first stretch goal. (laughs) Uh, So you will get this, and it comes with this die, which is is large. Uh, It's 80 millimeters on a face, I believe. Uh, What's it made out of? It is made out of plastic. It's Uh, heavy. It is heavy. This is, I think, close to a pound. (laughs) You're not rolling on a glass table. No. It is, it is a large die, and it also comes with a, st- a stack of cards that are related to the Munchkin Colossal level die. This is for tracking your level, not for rolling. Yes. So you have, it has numbers uh, 1 through Munchkin. It says 1.2 uh, pounds on the main page. There you go. So slightly over a pound. Uh, these are, plastic. if you've never seen one of these in real life before, these are spin down. So they actually spin to correspond to the next level. You should not need to throw it unless you are mad at somebody. <laughs> yeah, please do not throw it at someone. Tear hates. Uh, we we, we five what what user three. what you're going to use that for is not our concern. Uh, it is this is everything up until expansion three. So it is core set, expansion two, expansion three, expansion six, and then bosses, side quest one, and side quest two. Thank you so much. Auto, I can't even. How do you say that? Auto. Auto VP. Auto VP five twenty from Italy. Okay. Thank you so much for ordering. So the die you're gonna get is gonna be a, a random color. We have, I believe, it comes the ones we have in stock are black, blue, and green. Black, blue, and this is the green. We showed up the blue last week, and the black yes. ones. They're all this pearlescent marbled color. So they they're all black with these slightly lighter. Or they're all the their color with a slightly like pearlescent uh, marbling through. <laughs> Whoever backer six 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 should get a red colossal die. <laughs> I don't know if we have any of the red ones left. Those, those were the first printing. We just did red, and we yeah. sold through those, so we printed the 
The next colors. WTB uh, Blue? Want, want to buy oh, Blue. Ah, uh, I believe they're still available on sale, but... Uh, well, I don't think they're available on sale right now. Oh, yes, <laughs> no. I don't think they are. Don't <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're putting them on hold for a bit, but... <laughs> Yes, yes, this will. If you have a glass table, this will smash it up. This is not a yes. hollow die. This is solid. It is very uh, heavy. Pound and a half resin die. All right, so let's. I'm going to take a, a glance to see if my browser is finished. Oh my gosh. Oh God, it's crashing. <laughs> uh, we are already at 663 backers already. We've already made the funding goal in the first five, six minutes. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, guys. Um. But yeah, this is, uh, uh, let's see, how to play Munchkin. Well, you guys know how to play Munchkin. And fully funded, uh, yes. Absolutely. See. Oh, my gosh. You guys are incredible. Thank you so, so much. There's pictures on there of what all is going to come in it. And how you can throw comes. any more sets in to meet certain goals, if we meet certain goals. Uh, there are stretch goals. They are not revealed yet. They are Those are going to be up to Daryl and the team to reveal as we break through the original funding goals and stuff. Uh, only English. Uh, yes, this is an English printing of the game. This, this, these are all the English printing, but we are doing uh, international shipping to some places. We are doing friendly shipping to the UK, I believe. Uh, EU. Give me just one second to pull up here. Um, we are doing friendly shipping to the UK, EU, and Canada, and we'll be shipping to many other locations around the world with some restricted areas. So the project should have shipping details uh, about what's going to be involved in international shipping. Uh, to your country, that's going to depend on taxes and insurance and those sorts of things. But the details should be on the project there uh, for where we are going to be shipping it to. Are there any discounts if we buy all of the expansions in the Pledge Manager? I only own the Munchkin base game. So it's a great chance to load off. Uh, so after, load. after the campaign is completed, when we get to the Pledge Manager, uh, Daryl has said all the expansions that we have in print should be available via the Pledge Manager. Mm -hmm. As far as the pricing, I don't know what that's going to be, what the pricing is going to be like, but they should be available in the Pledge Manager to add to your pledge. Any add-ons that you advise? Uh, well, with this, I mean, dragons and princesses always go good with with uh, side quests and stuff like that. So that's always a fun one, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else. There's, I'm just so excited that you guys are doing this already, that, that you've blown us out of the water already at this. I'm like, I can't even think. Um, oh, goodness. Any other expansions you advise? <laughs> are the D6 in the box matter marble? Some of the pictures look different. Uh, I'm going to have to defer to Daryl on that, what those particular dice look like for the D6s. Um, <laughs> Yay, I no longer need a game mule. <laughs> no, no, you do not. I think we're we've we've figured right. out a lot so of there, So there's a lot I'm gonna try to catch up on chat. There's a lot of you guys here. So let me I'm gonna scroll back through chat for a second. So you smash my table, got that. Uh don't take that through airport security. I don't take them worse through airport security. Uh, I think I've accidentally taken one of these through airport security going back to California or something like that. They don't uh, you really... will not be able to choose the die color, it's gonna be randomized. Yes. Um, already over the goal. Um, I I just finished putting my Tyler bits on time back to the limited offer. There we go. We're gonna throw any more sets. We meet certain goals. We'll talk about the stretch goals. Um, the... will the official but broken Munchkin companion Android app ever be fixed? We will have to contact our developers <laughs> about that. Some of those are our apps are uh, almost a decade old themselves yes. at this point, and I don't know if we even have contact with the original developers on those any longer. I know we um, do still have the Munchkin one on Steam, if you uh, have a Steam Deck or anything like that, but... <laughs> yeah, but for but the, these are some of the level counter apps, and yeah. they, those are, are pretty old, and, and we that would probably have to start over from scratch on those. I don't see Batman um, or Warhammer in the add-on section. Uh, well, again, not all the add-ons are going to be available right now. Uh, yeah. Daryl said he'll get them all. He said he'll get... All the available sets we have in the store after the campaign closes. So when you're doing the the finalization of your pledges in Backer Kit, uh, stuff should be in the add-on store there. Right now, we're focused on getting as much as we could ready for today. Yes. Um, any add-ons we advise? Uh, so so the things that I like, uh, since I've been playing Munchkin for a long time, is I like alternate ways to end the game. Yeah. And... Uh, bosses and side quests both give that, so those those make me happy because mm -hmm. I have to have those elements in. Um, 
my other sets that I like because of that, if you're mixing Munchkins, is I like Munchkin Cthulhu and I like Munchkin Apocalypse because they both have fun alternate ways that you can pursue to end the game and surprise people with. Um, uh, any playmats or... Oh gosh, this is going really fast. Any playmats... Uh, Munchkin playmats planned for the campaign or upcoming 25th anniversary? I see is one one of the questions that we've got. Um, not as far as I'm aware, are we planning any playmats? I don't know. If we've got any specific play. Uh, yeah, they they could surprise us. Like I said, they yeah. have not revealed the stretch goals to us, so that we can accidentally leak them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the D6s appear yeah. to be the same. This is well, compatible with Munchkin that. Dungeon Crawl. Uh, I think you're talking about Munchkin Dungeon. That is a different game. That is a board game yes. dungeon crawl uh, by Simon, and that is it is not compatible. That is its own dungeon crawl game. This is the Munch Munchkin card game that we've been putting out primarily uh, since 2001. Uh, so this is the the Munchkin card game, not Munchkin Quest, not uh, yeah. here, not Munchkin Quest, not Munchkin Panic, not Munchkin Loot Letter, not Munchkin Gloom, not Smash Up Munchkin, which are all other Munchkin games that have come out that are not Munchkin, but Munchkin themed game versions of other games. Correct. Uh, so also the one expansions are one through three and six. That is correct. Yeah, we're doing three and six. two, three, and six, as well as a couple of our smaller uh, micro expansions. You can try to smash them. You're welcome to try to house through that, and if you come up with a good way to do it, let us know about it. Uh, all right. Speaking of letting us know things, I I think we answered all the burning questions right now. Uh, if we've missed one, pop it back in. We'll ask him. Any card holders available for gameplay? We're not making any branded like uh, uh, sleeves or card holders or or things like that because basically uh, plenty of other people have made those things and yeah, they don't have much conversions, but they've got more experience in making them and you can probably just go out and get them now and put your Munchkin mm -hmm. stuff in them. Uh, is there much expansion that adds non-binary to the game? Uh, not currently. Uh, Munchkin Munchkin Dungeon. Oh, we got that one. I think card holders have Dungeon Living. Munchkin Shirts. Oh, yeah. So these shirts uh, we're wearing actually are both from uh, Geek, a company called Geek Tropical. We did partner yep. with them. Uh, these are still available. So if you like these, these are Munchkin branded shirts. Uh, yes. Mine is a little less, a little more subtle, Mr. Bones. And this fully tropical Munchkin with the dragon and flower and the unnatural axe in there. Yeah. Um, but they make some <laughs> like Hawaiian style. Uh, shirts with Munchkin themes things. They have other other geeky brands they do yes. stuff for as well. So yes, that yes, company yes. is like Geek Tropical. Fun stuff as well. Uh, will there be a pledge on the future to have all the expansions or only add-on? Right now, I don't. I, I believe our pledge levels are going to be uh, the game, the early version of the game that has one of these in it, mm -hmm. or the retailer version. If you are a retail store, you can pledge for uh, multiple copies at a retailer discount to sell in your retail store. We'll For follow that. We'll follow that up if you are a retailer and everything like that. Those are the backer levels you see. Anything else is going to be add-ons. So there's not going to be any other backer levels that I'm aware of right now. I see. So uh, Daryl says he's working on a uh, poll for yes. the fan vote for the next stretch goal. All right. So you guys are going to be able to, to fill out a poll for the next stretch goal. Yeah. So um, watch backer kit for that. Watch backer kit for that. In the meantime, this box have room for any more expansion. It does. Oh, it, will yes. hold, it will hold over 2,000 cards, and we're not putting, we're only putting about 650 or so in it right now. So you'll have room for at least double what we give you in there. Uh, the standees, I believe, are uh, flat standees. I don't think they're 3D standees. I saw that there was a question that popped up for uh, that. 3D standees. Well, they're they're the standees with the plastic. Yeah, base. the it's your your traditional cardboard. Stick them in the standees, kind of ones. Yep. There we go. Uh, the chipboard with the plastic holder is what we're doing for the standees this time. Just like with the like, deluxe. Yeah, just like with most of the deluxe sets. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, uh, we have a pause in the question. So what I'm going to do is we did uh, talk to a bunch of you guys, or we, we had you guys do send in Munchkin memories yeah. uh, So to our marketing team. They pulled some and sent them to us. So some stories from you all about uh munching that you've had over the years so we're going to start first and we're going to just use first names on these 
Uh, Elijah wrote in and said, The first time we ever played Munchkin, my mom was falling asleep at the table, but she still won because we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds, Sounds right. about right. Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds like playtesting. Can we get more book points of the stretch goal? I believe so. Well, we're going to, Daryl's going to put up some polls about the stretch goals and what you guys want to see. So, uh, follow that and let him know that that's what you want to see. I was hoping the figure for figure STLs. Uh, do we don't have any plans to do, um, to release the Munchkin Ponds as STLs right now. Um, uh, we're still doing, I think most of our STL work currently is mostly focused around the fantasy trip lines. Yeah. And, and Car Wars lines. Yeah. Um, we don't have, like I said, our... We don't have a huge STL department. We have a uh, part of risk this time Hi. and part of someone else's time <laughs> that are you know doing a little bit of STL work. Yeah. Um, Steven sent us a letter. He said, uh, Munchkin World NYC, I took part in the Munchkin tournament and made it to the last day. It was an intense game with a prize of a prototype Munchkin steampunk on the line. Uh, the game had so much back and forth, backstabbing and sudden changes of level was crazy. Uh, eventually, we got to the point where a few players were in striking distance of level 10. Player was in battle for a winning level and asked for help. I offered help with the construction that I keep the prototype prize as a joke. Player said he was from out of state and already had full baggage, so the extra game wouldn't fit anyway and agreed to the deal. I didn't win the tournament, tournament but I still got the prize. I played Munchkin for years, and I don't think I'll ever top that day. Uh... Rip, do you want to read uh, Tobias yeah. Tony's story here? I did see a question pop up. Is this going to hold all of the base sets and expansions? Um, I don't know that there's anything in the world that is built right now that can hold all of the base sets and expansions, but it does sure hold it, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, all, all of the base sets and all of the expansions. The If you were here earlier when we were reading out of the Munchkin book, um, <clears throat> as of 2015, there were over 5,000 Munchkin cards yes. in play, and this box will hold 2,000, and that was 10 years ago. Uh, so, <laughs> so there's been a few, more, been a few more cards printed since then. The campaign accessories, but they're not currently in the add-ons. Will there will they be added later? Yeah. Sorry uh, to ask. Well, yeah. The campaign accessories are not currently in the add-ons. Yeah, not all of the can not all of the Munchkin stuff is currently in the add-ons. When we get to the when the campaign is finalized and we get to the part where you're going in and fin finalizing your pledges after the campaign is closed, <laughs> uh, Daryl is going to have gone through and put more things in the add-on store so that they can be available to add after the campaign is over with. Um, you cannot choose your color for the giant D10s. Uh, they are going to be randomized because they're just going to be pulled off and put in those first first packages. We are not going to have the bandwidth for the very small shipping department to uh please to don't make track me all do, of those. Please don't make me keep track of all that. Um, <laughs> uh, letter. Tobias slash Toby. My favorite memory of Munchkin was when my friends and I played classic Munchkin with a bunch of expansions, and my friend managed to get two curses, one that forced her to rhyme every time she talked, and she would lose a level every time she didn't rhyme, and the other forced her to nonstop talk, and she would lose a level if she didn't. So she just couldn't do it. So after losing six levels, we agreed that she could stop because it was unfair and brutal to watch. Ha ha. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Oh, gosh. Six wow. levels to not rhyming. <laughs> uh, Lance, I love the pure lunacy Munchkin allows. A random houseplant that wipes a level nine player or a random assistant for the win. Or a random assist for the win. <laughs> I think it was Brian. It was yeah. Fun. Brian have uh having a maser phaser laser etc and still losing, a fun and funny game. So that's from Star Munchkin where any any uh, weapon that ends in azer can be stacked with the rest of them into one big thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So you had a maser phaser laser, uh, maser, which phaser, is which laser. is a many many large bonus thing at that point. Yep. Yeah. And still losing. Uh, we'll try to get to a few more questions, here. And uh, let's see. Oh, a lot of first time chats. So let's see what we can get. Uh, does the box have room? We covered that one. Fun to super fast. We have courtroom level legal debates when playing Munchkin. Of course. Uh, it does not hold, the box does not hold every, absolutely every Munchkin set and expansion. Uh, you would need several. You would, you would need at least uh, three of them just to hold everything up to 2015. Uh. Yeah, no. <laughs> It will definitely hold most of your favorites, though. I will say that. Oh, we've got one on. We've got well one my, on chat. Will it stack well with my ogre designer edition huge box? 
Uh, it should be much smaller than that box. Yeah. We did learn a few lessons. We 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 try to make not to make any more game boxes that require team lift for them. <laughs> you waste what I already have. Uh, I mean, you're welcome game. to combine two core copy games. It's gonna it's gonna make it very big. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. Uh, my, my, <laughs> my my general personal rule on combining Munchkin games, and this is just my personal preference, is I try just to limit the time and space that it takes up. Is I will do two core games or one core game and two of the numbered expansions and maybe one or two of the small expansions. That's my personal limit on how big I want my Munchkin games to be because I want them to end in a reasonable amount of time. I've seen been at conventions where they have like six core sets and 12 yeah. expansions, but they they intend to play for six or more hours on that game of Munchkin. Um, um, it should be all of the expansions. Uh, Weird FTW, do the cards include included in the big box pledge contain all the cards from the included expansions or just some from each? Oh, no, they, they, you, were get the, yeah, um, you get the entire yeah. core set, entire Unnatural Acts 2, entire or, entire Munchkin 2 Unnatural Acts, entire Munchkin 3 Clerical Errors, the entire Munchkin 6. So you get the full version of each of those sets. Uh, we have a story from chat. I was at the Munchkin tournament in Essen, Germany, and lost at level 9 against two priests at the same time, so two people came into the finals, <laughs> and I hadn't had a chance to get there as a second chance. It was frustrating. I drove all through Germany for one bad luck game. Oh, that's too bad. Did they win via divine intervention? Because I had that happen to me just the other week. <laughs> Will the big box be able to hold all of my future hopes and dreams? I no. sure hope so. <laughs> no, no I, hope, I hope your dreams are bigger than that. Yeah, that's the, that's the correct answer. I hope your dreams are bigger than the box is. Or maybe like ogre box size, possibly, right. but I ran a D and D campaign long ago with about ten players, and Munchkin was a favorite pastime of the game world I ran. So between adventures, we had Munchkin sessions where I and a couple of the non-player friends would play NPCs playing Munchkin against the players and each other, of course. Coffee at uh, Joe's says some of our epic Munchkin zombie games have lasted five plus hours. Ooh. My favorite memory is having a final fight with both sides getting combat level eighty plus. All right, so, uh, the Good Death Munchkin Five E RPG book. I don't. We don't have any plans to uh, re up that series, um, but uh, uh, the Munchkin D Twenty series. We don't currently have any plans for that. All right, I'm going to scroll back. I know this is going really fast. I'm sorry we're not getting all your comments answered, guys. But this is there are a lot more in here of you in here than there usually are. <laughs> we're uh, trying, guys. We're, we're trying, trying to keep, keep up. up. We've, we've got it on. We've got it on screen there. We've got I'm it tracking here. So let's scroll back. <laughs> Uh, just about the box and all the core expansions and zombies. Hope it all fits. I hope it all fits for you too. My gosh, that's a lot. Thank well, you. The box so also be in French. Now, this this game box is being published in English. Um, we are not publishing multiple language versions of this. So this pro this particular project yeah. is published in English because a lot of our foreign language editions are published through part translation partners who license bunch from us and they do the publishing of the alternate language sets. So. We cannot commit them to making this as well. Right now, this is for us making this set in English. Now, we'll ship it to you, <laughs> but it, it, it's going to be done in English. Uh, I have a hand-drawn card by John Kowalik called V. Frank... V. Francais. V. Francais. <laughs> Cards that let you change the meaning of any one word on any, any card. It's very popular in Montreal. <laughs> Can I add add-ons now without impacting my pledge level, or shall I wait till the campaign ends? So uh, if you're back, if you're at the pledge level, you can do add-ons now. There will be more, more opportunity to do add-ons uh, at the end of the campaign when all of the add-ons are available, but you can do them without affecting your pledge level now. Uh, basically, once you're locked into that pledge level, that's where you're at, and any add-ons are just added to that pledge level. Now, if you change, I have not done a backer kit live campaign myself personally before, so I don't know if you change your, your, camp, your backing level to a different one if you have to read add on stuff or not. Daryl might be able to answer that one. Uh, Daryl is having a hard time keeping up. I know that was popped up earlier. So you guys are rocking it right Darryl, now. <laughs> we are now at 1,270 backers at $170,000 already. It fits within an Ikea Calyx is what I is uh, what Yes, Darryl someone asked it. us last week if the box would fit yes. within a Calyx and Daryl said it, it should fit within should a standard I... Calyx spot. Uh, I don't know because I don't know the, how close that is. Okay. That's uh, Someone dropped that in here, but I don't want to put that on screen not yeah. knowing if that is close or not. <laughs> okay. That's an old Munchkin monster box, but I do I not think... know um, dimension-wise. 
how close that is, so I don't yeah. want to put it on screen and, and confuse anybody. Will we show it later? Uh, Possibly. If, if, if Daryl gets a break and tells us, yeah, it's real close to that, um, we can put it on screen. Uh, but I don't want to confuse anybody as to think that that's what they're getting because that's not what they're getting. Standard sizing. Yes, I do too. Yeah. I wish pe more people. Yeah, Calyx is great because a lot of people <laughs> use that as their game shelf, so it's it's real handy when when things fit inside that. It's Catch all up. my vinyl. Right. Uh, physical Catch size. Up. <laughs> uh, I don't have the exact physical dimensions of it, but uh, Calyx is thirteen by thirteen, I believe, and so it fits. I just think that's what we decided that. last time was it was thirteen by thirteen. I think it's well, it's less than thirteen by thirteen. Yeah. Uh, confirm the dice in the box of 14 millimeter dice, but can be upgraded to 19 millimeters if we meet the stretch goal. Thank you for sleuthing that out for us, Bethu. I appreciate you. Thank Somebody you. have already said that, but I, I just saw it here, so thank you for over 173k and almost 1300 backers. 13,000 backers. Excuse me, I can't see that far. 1300 backers. Oh, it is 1300. Okay. Yeah. 13,000 backers will be real. Guy, nice. can we get? <laughs> <laughs> we, may have to, we may have to print a few more. Do you want to handle that many orders? I mean, oh, if I have people, to. People are farming stuff up. The dimensions, dimensions of the box will be 10.5 by 10.5 by 2. That's, that's, uh, well, I don't know who that's from, so I'm not sure on that. Meerkat? I'm going to see if I can find specifics on our page here. 500 Colossal Dives versions left. 43 people are backing with the standard version. Yeah. Some people might not want it, or it might worry oh, about it. Oh, it's Meredith. Effort. Yeah, Meredith. Oh, it's the Meredith. Correct size. Okay, then yeah, for confirmed. Then, Those then are yeah. the confirmed cool. measurements. <laughs> so 10 and, a half, 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches by 2 inches. Daryl says 2 inches, no way. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I think it'll be bigger. Than I think it's half. bigger than 2 inches. Uh, could be wrong. Could be wrong. No one can the chat says Calix holes are 13 and a quarter by 13 and a quarter inches. Yep. Uh, there you go. But we, we we do know that the there box are. will fit in that tower. Yeah. Daryl says the depth is 4.25 inches. So 10 and a half by 10 and a half by four and a quarter. Hi, John. Hi, John. Welcome into the chat. Don't listen to the CEO. She knows nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, she knows a lot more than most of us. That's for sure. She was, she was on vacation. Yeah. She just got uh, How many expansions can it hold? It says 2,000 cards. Roughly how many is that? So a a, a, a base set of cards in most Munchkin games is about 168. Yeah. Um, our numbered expansion... No. Is that right? Uh, I don't know what your thought was, Jimmy, so I can't tell you. To... <laughs> Sorry, my brain <laughs> shut up halfway through this sentence, too. Uh, you might mean centimeters, not <clears throat> millimeters. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, so a base set is 168 cards. Yeah. Uh, a numbered expansion set, one of the large expansion sets, are... Nope, not that one. Uh, They're 500, right? They are... Mm -hmm. This one is kind of one. They're around 56, 56 to 64 cards a lot of the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we go, Munchkin 10. <laughs> Munchkin 10 is 112 <laughs> cards. So... Uh, they range from 50 to 100 on the numbered sets and these, some of the bigger expansions. Uh, but lots up to 112 cards or so. The smaller expansions range from a dozen to 50 or 60 cards. I'm sorry, and... I'm not meaning to laugh this hard, so I'm so sorry. Uh, they really, I really have to say, can there be an add-on for a replica of that dude's mustache? I want it. <laughs> <laughs> It's so hard not to die. Oh my god, thank you. That was amazing. I appreciate that, but no, this is mine. You can't have it. He is uh, unique. Must have we'll only production. Let's we'll go. We'll have to re, we'll have to re release extra dice. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10 comment. Uh, so, so, to answer your question, most Munchkin base sets have about 168 cards, the numbered sets have about 112 cards. And these smaller expansions have anywhere from 12 to 50 cards. So that will tell you how much more you can fit on top of the 650 or so that are going to come in here already. Uh, um, if you sleeve all of the cards, will they fit into the box? Um, generally speaking, from experience um, with sleeving cards, I generally assume to subtract about 50 to 100, depending on how thick your sleeves are. I know some sleeve... Uh, manufacturers do sleeve their card 
have their sleeves at a thicker consistency so that it's a little bit more protected. So it really depends on what sleeves you get. I know our, I don't know about our size sleeves that we're doing, because we're doing sleeves, right? Sorry. Are we doing sleeves? We're not doing sleeves. We're not doing sleeves. I thought we were. I'm sorry. Um, sleeves would be separate. But yeah, so I would say just assume to have a smaller number of percentage in the box available once you sleeve your entire deck. Uh, Daryl says check the FAQ though, because there are, are perfect fit Mayday sleeves. Yeah. Mayday is really good about doing really good sizing. Where's the FAQ? Uh, I think it should be... He's got an FAQ somewhere. But, um, Brandon, are we ready for the next segment yet? Uh, the Zoom call? Yeah. Uh, we need I believe a so. Jimmy mask. <laughs> Kai Fox will be in. We'll go. We'll do. You it. want to join the, the call? Uh, yeah, let me do that here. real quick here. Um, we need a, a Jimmy Guy Fox mask. Is what... <laughs> I I sent a link and I need to get it myself. Uh, go click on perfect mayday sleeves. Check the FAQ. And so our next segment here is. Do you want, let me switch right back real quick. Sorry, a little technical work, guys. Give us one hopping sec. To real quick. <laughs> Need to. You absolutely can play them all together if you really want to. Just know that that is going to be a very, very, very long game. <laughs> Hello. All right, John, can you hear us? Oh, Oop. hang on. John left. Oh, no. Hop back. Quick, hop back to the screen. All right. So, so we're going to be in just a minute uh, talking to John Kavalik of Kavalik Fame. We'll continue doing uh, some chatting with you guys here and answering your questions if we can keep it up. Uh, Aww, that's so sweet. Take a long time playing one. I'm sure John would love to hear that. I'm going to try and remember that. How much do you think will be made at the end? Do we have staff make an estimation? No. Oh no, we never try to guesstimate. <laughs> we we have hopes, but we don't try to we don't try to estimate or, or take bets Our on hopes it. and dreams uh, for this campaign do not fit in the big box. We'll just say that. <laughs> there you go. That's a good way to put it. There's John. Hi John. Hey John, can you hear us? Oh. We're gonna we're gonna Hello. Go through. Hey. How's it going? We can we got you in there. So everybody, welcome in John Kavalik, artist for Munchkin, among many other things. Dork Tower, Munchkin, Apple Staples, a lot of stuff all across nerddom. Welcome on in, John Kavalik. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm I'm just kind of astounded watching these numbers keep going up. They're going up fast. <laughs> We're almost sold through these dice already. Uh, but welcome on in uh thank you for being with us and helping us kick off this campaign uh we're gonna let uh daryl answer those questions while we talk oh we'll have brandon try to check that and see if the sound is coming back through again apologies no no worries everything seems good on my end all right uh we'll see if when john picks us back up we can hear us again all right, he's, he's working on technical issues on his, and we'll, we'll get it sorted out here in just a second. How about that, John? Oh, Can you hear us you now? Go. Yep, that's great. Got okay, it. cool. Thanks. Sweet. All right, so like I said, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. And oh, yeah, we're is, watching these is, numbers too, just going crazy. This is a this is a delight. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so we 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 got a couple of questions here. We'll get through a few of them, um, sure. and uh, as we answer a bunch of questions for people going through here. Uh, so the first one, how did you initially become involved with creating art for the Munchkin? Oh, I I had been doing a uh, I'd been doing the Murphy's Rules uh, strip uh, uh, panel comic for uh, Steve Jackson Games for Pyramid Magazine, starting with Pyramid Number Ten, and um, I had kind of forced my way in at the end of the Inwo project. Um, because my wife and I were both collectible card gamers, and I called up Steve, and I said, Steve, so I hear you're doing Inwo. Uh, do you have any art that needs done? And lucky for me, at that point in time, Inwo was running behind schedule, and Steve threw 20 cards my way, 
and they they worked out. And a little bit later, Steve asked me if I wanted to illustrate Shea Geek, and that was a thrill. Um, and about and that worked out really well. Uh, Shea Geek is still one of my favorite games. I, I had a really and, good time with that one. It, it came out uh, while I was in college in that situation. <laughs> nice, nice. So it was it was a fun one for me. Yeah, and uh, about a year after that, I got a. Uh, email from Steve out of the blue just saying, hey, I'm working on a game called Munchkin and do you want to illustrate this? And so this was I mean, I've been a Steve Jackson fanboy since the late 70s. Uh, the uh, metagaming microgames, you know, were some of the first games I played. You know, I, I would uh, pick them up in this small uh, game store in Bristol, England. Uh, we lived We lived in Somerset, England at the time. And uh, boy, you know, to to get the chance to work on a Steve Jackson game, uh, but you know, Steve had designed every every little fanboy neuron in my head just exploded at that moment. It was a huge, huge thrill, and um, yeah, just uh, fortunately, my style fit the humor of the game, and it's you know, there's been no looking back. I I stopped counting how many Munchkin cards I've drawn when it hit about 7,500 a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, we were reading uh, some selections from uh, this book earlier. Yeah, uh, Steve yes. had a Munchkin by the Numbers segment from, from 2015. It was like, yes. I think John's drawn over about 5,000 at this point. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, I'm like, that was nine years ago, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's averaged out over the 25 years of, of Munchkin, roughly. It's averaged out to about a card a day. Um, but really, you know, they come in in batches of 168 or so, and so I will draw, you know, 10 to 12 a day when I'm in the groove, and, you know, maybe 40 in a week. Um, I've got, uh, at this point in time, it's it's just still as fun as it ever was. Uh, when I got some of these cards from Steve, some of the new cards, there were 50 brand new cards for this, uh, for the big box. And it was such a, it was, it was like so hilarious just reading through the cards. It's just like, oh yeah, this is, this is classic Munchkin. This is going to be really good. And I know you get to uh, officially count your among us, yourself among the artists who have done Batman now, thanks to Munchkin Batman. <laughs> Yes, yes, and... thank you, DC Comics. I'm officially a Batman <laughs> artist. I'm, yes. I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm the best Batman artist. Uh, but, you, but, but you're in the list. I'm on the list. And <laughs> honestly, that is one of my favorites. That and Munchkin Shakespeare are probably my two favorite sets. Um, I, I, you know, close is going to be 40K. But, oh my gosh, I was so happy with that boat. Shakespeare and Batman turned out. I just couldn't be happier with those. Shakespeare's a really fun set that I had to take out to my my theater troupe that does Shakespeare. I'm like, all right, yeah, we need no. I need you guys to see this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I actually finished drawing Munchkin Shakespeare on the banks of the River Thames in London at the nice. bar at Shakespeare's Globe. <laughs> Sweet. That's, That's so a cool. per perfect capstone to that. Yeah. Yes, it really was. Uh, so this this last. Last trip to London, I dropped off a copy at the uh, Shakespeare's Globes gift store. So, fingers crossed, uh, nice. we may have a little bit of a footprint there soon enough. Cool. Uh, let's see, we're going to go a couple more of these questions, and then we've got some coming up in chat as well. Sure, sure, um, sure. So, of all the cards you've created, which has your favorite piece of art? Oh, that's and so I know. hard. Yeah, yeah. Pick, pick one of your favorite of yeah. your 7000 babies. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm so, going to I'm going to do 3. Because the 3 one, is perfectly acceptable. The one is the one that stood the test of time, uh which is Duck of Doom. Um I uh that's still <laughs> that's a card that can still like, you know, it's it's similar enough to my style now. Like, you know, my style has obviously evolved of the watch. Um, but that one could still fit in a, um, a, a, a any current Munchkin set uh, really, really nicely. Um, and I, I've had people say, oh, you, you ripped the Duck of Doom off of Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, the kid's book. It's like, no, Duck of Doom was first. Duck of Doom was first. So um, I've got a very soft spot for the Hobgoblin. 
from uh, one of the first Pathfinder uh, uh, supplement, I think. Um, the, the Goblin supplement. Uh, for uh, okay, uh, truly obnoxious, or was the one before that one? I I could not tell you. <laughs> I think it was uh, truly obnoxious. Uh, oh, yeah, it was truly so, obnoxious. It was drawn in a Calvin and Hobbes style, and I loved it. But in the new set, there is a card, a dungeon card, called Catacombs. <laughs> and I was so... I had such a great time with that card because I drew it with a little bit of an homage to a certain scene in Disney's uh, the Disneyland ride, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, um, so nice. I just slipped a little bit of a Disney fanboy. Uh, you know, not nothing, nothing actionable, obviously. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but um, yeah, and again, it's just like I have as much fun now drawing munchkin as i ever had it's just terrific i'm i'm very very lucky to be able to do this uh let's see if we could pull a few from the chat here um i know there was a request of when you're going to go up to german con i believe was one. Oh yeah are you are you planning any trips to germany for conventions anytime soon oh i at the moment i'm just starting to get back into the convention swing um i i'm gonna say there's a non-zero chance i would be at essen uh this year or more likely next year but i really want to get back to germany the german fandom is amazing and in fact i think it was hanover hanover spiel was i think that was my first overseas convention back in 2002 or something like that um so, yeah, I love Germany. love getting over there as often as I can. I am going to be... Uh, my first Italian convention uh, is uh, coming up in about a month. Uh, the first one in, since, you know, the before times. Um, so it'll be great getting back to Italy. Uh, I'll be in Modena. Modena? Is that how you pronounce it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, anybody out there who's Italian. I, I love <laughs> the vinegar. I've never known how to pronounce it. Um, but, yeah, in mid-May, I'll be in Modena um italy and this so is the was... last one okay <laughs> um and yeah so it's, it's it's kind of weird because again after three four years of the pandemic and uh, the snap um getting back in the conventions at last is a lot of fun it is it's you forget how much work it is oh yes. saying it's the first time we went back we're like oh right i forgot i have to Use voice training on this to make it into all day and everything. Yeah, it's it's. Mm. I just had like a couple of back to back conventions. I was out there with Steve at a, a convention in Atlanta called Nerdy Graf. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh and, yeah. And on the heels of that, I went to GaryCon uh, in Lake Geneva for the first time. And it's been a while since I've done two conventions in a year, let alone back to back. Uh, let's see. We had a. Uh, uh, would someone say uh, John's art is a huge part of what makes Munchkin Munchkin for me? Every card gets to look look at when I check out the art as soon as they open up the box. Oh, thank you. It, this was this was a really interesting project because um, I think there are three or four sets of other cards which I redrew, uh, which other artists had drawn. Because obviously, there's so much Munchkin. There's no way on earth I can draw it all. Right. Um, and I'm a big fan of you know, many of the other Munchkin artists. Uh, they're just fantastic. They do such a good job. And redrawing some of their work was intimidating. <laughs> These folks are much better artists than I am. Because you're like, I don't want to mess with that one. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, but I tried, I tried not to just ape their cards. I tried to come up with something new, uh, as if the card was brand new to me. I didn't want to just draw... Uh, Lar or Katie or Lenny's art as they had already done it. I wanted to try and add something a little new to it. Um, Just take that as if it were the art direction and then exactly. do something with exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. But it's like, oh my goodness, what what amazing artists they all are. It is oh, yeah. really intimidating. It's like, back off, guys. Stop being so good. <laughs> uh, here's one. Have any drawings been rejected? Mm, occasionally. Um... At this point in time, for the most part, Steve knows 
what to expect from me, and I know what Steve's looking for. It's been an awfully long time since I've had a card out and out rejected. Sometimes there'll be tweaks. Yeah. Um, I know Games Workshop had rejected, and Games Workshop, by the way, were great to work with. Holy cow. Um, that uh, The whole Sigmar 40k was, a, yeah, again, just I heard Andrew of... say he was really surprised how much he was able to get away with. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and I had a couple of cards rejected because I had, it was very technical. It's like I had some Space Marine insignia on the wrong side of the uh... Uh, armor. Um, but out in that rejection, uh, I cannot remember the last one. I really can't. Now, it started, like, when I when I first drew uh, my very first Inwo cards for Steve, obviously Inwo is a very different art style. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Steve had asked me on when I called him up, it was like, okay, can you draw in Watchman style? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I can draw in Watchman style, no problem. And as soon as I got off the phone, I went to look up what Watchmen it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's like, as it turns out, um, I could draw in Watchmen style if I took an awful lot of time, but I had one card there, and it's just a boot. It was just a close-up of a boot uh, stepping down. And Steve rejected that card six times. <laughs> and I didn't have enough uh chains on it i didn't have enough studs on it um oh so God. very it was a great experience because very early on it's like oh okay i can redo this i'll redo this i'll redo this like six times oh my god yes okay i can redo this again um yeah, if i remember right uh in was a lot of dan smith art wasn't it yes dan smith oh. and i'm blanking on her name uh sh Oh, terrific artist, amazing artist. Um, uh, I'm just totally, this is embarrassing. I'm so, my apologies. But yeah, so I, again, I, there I am, me, drawing with two much, much, much better artists. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was crazy. But yeah, that kind of got me used to having cards rejected very early on in my career, which is something that's going to happen no matter what. And you can't take it personally. But, you know, there are a lot of times Steve um or or andrew would send me art specs with just a ridiculous card title and the entire spec would be you know what to do john <laughs> <laughs> and, and sad sad to say i did well leaning into that question uh i did just see one that was on here the the card names are undeniably funny how did you design the artwork to lean in into the humor of the game oh um, it's just been a natural progression i mean the my my own personal style is very silly very cartoony um and it's just always kind of fit so i haven't really changed it i mean there's obviously a, some difference between a munchkin card and a panel from dork tower or mm -hmm. an illustration for cash and guns um, I just did a game for a French company um, called Grail Cup, uh, and again, I try, I try to move away from the Munchkin style, which is primarily what I'm known for, and to give everything a little bit of a different twist. So it's really not so much me um, uh, molding my style to fit Munchkin. It's me molding my style to fit anything that's not Munchkin. <laughs> <laughs> or Munchkin sort of became your style over the, the decades I, it's you've been working been, on it? Yeah, it's, al it's always been uh, the two have gone hand in hand, really. Yeah. I know in my experience, at least, uh, John, you and Steve have been like so synonymous with Munchkin my entire life. Every time I hear John, I immediately think of your artwork, and it's just... <laughs> been my entire childhood <laughs> so i'm very well, yeah. honored to have met you <laughs> oh as 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 again as somebody who just grew up loving steve's game designs mm -hmm. uh the fact that you know steve and i will hang out at conventions and you know steve is a friend at this point in time steve is a very very good friend and it's like oh my gosh how did my life get to this point this is just amazing yeah. 
Uh, let's see. We had one here. Um, I just lost it. Where was it? <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> oh. Is it a challenge to create so many cards for a single game? How do you continue to stay motivated for it? Uh, the motivation is easy because the, the cards, every set is going to be different. Every set will have its own challenges, um, its own uh, its own motivating factor. Um, and it's it's not that difficult. It's just fun. Munchkin is huge fun, and it always has been. Uh, it's um, I think uh, because I get a lot of freedom uh, when I draw a card, uh, Steve will know there'll be some cards where I might just go off in a different direction. I always like when I send in my art notes, I always add. I can change his back if you'd rather, and it's never needed to be done. But that's just out of politeness. But you know, there is uh, for the catacombs card, nothing said the jail scene from Disney's. <laughs> <Five Star Trek. laughs> I just, I just, it just made sense. <laughs> you know, maybe it's the ADHD. I don't know. It's <laughs> all these. But you read it. Weird... You went. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the best. Uh, those are the best. Um, each each time you get a art spec, it's a little bit of its own mini game. Like, okay, how can I make this fun? How can I make this not just a standard? Let's let's not have Spike or Flower just standing there doing something. Can I add something a little visually that just brings something more to the table? Yeah, um, one of the uh, uh, essays we read in the book um, was talking about the Munchkin cards both the art and the text telling their own stories outside of, or, or begging a story outside of what was there. Like, you know, the duck in the dungeon. Yes. Okay. But, yeah, but or the chicken on your head. What led to that? <laughs> what, what, how did you get there? Uh, or the balloons, like something is clearly happening or just happened with the balloons. What's, what's happened there? So yes. they, a lot of times appear to be stories in progress, even though it's just the one image. Or the aftermath of a story. Or the aftermath uh, of a story, exactly. The aftermath of a terrible, terrible story. The, the, <laughs> For the what led to that? Yeah, exactly. Um, the just, other nice... Oh, sorry, um, please. I'm just sorry. I just saw that on our chat, it said that our dices have officially sold out for our, our initial backer waves. Trying to get past the oh 1700 backers? It did, we yeah. Did. So, oh my gosh, that's insane. Just wanted to jump in and say thank you so much, everybody. We really, really appreciate you guys backing this with us. Yeah. It's been how long? Uh, how long has it been live? Uh, uh, 53 minutes. Yeah, oh not gosh. even an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so the insane. versions with where well, you got one of these for free are yes. gone because we didn't have that many of them left oh. i saw that i was actually tempted to back it just for that <laughs> <laughs> we could probably put one in seven for you oh maybe well if, if we have more than well, seven yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll give it to another backer it's okay <laughs> I, I'm, Steve, sure I can, one somewhere. I'm sure i can find one for you john then <laughs> oh. this is why i love working with you guys <laughs> uh, but yeah let's see do we have anything else uh well, here's the story. This is yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so, I for the longest time, I never won a Munchkin game uh, because I would be playing people at Munchkin, and they would assume I drew the cards. Therefore, I must know something about how to play. <laughs> yeah, of so course. I would get I would get ganged up on. I I just never <laughs> won. I would play dozens of games at conventions, never winning. Um, the first game I played, uh, the first game I won. I was at a convention, and I actually won use, playing as an orc. So I got to go up two levels by killing, I, if I'm remembering correctly, a low-level thing. And it took everybody else by surprise. And I just stood up from the table. I just did this. I was like, at last. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, but when I was in Poland uh, for the Pyrocon convention five or six years ago, again, another fantastic convention. Um, and one of the weird things, I'll, I'll talk about this later, but one of the weird things is how Munchkin is so popular in, what is it, 19 languages now or, or more? Um, Probably, yeah. But it's like, it's all based on these English puns. And so I just don't understand how, I mean, the translators must have been doing a heck of a job getting you know, some of these jokes into Polish or Ukrainian 
or Hebrew, I think, is one of the languages, or uh, Portuguese, or He's whatever. Italian, French. Yes, yes. Japanese. Um, Japanese. Oh, German. Japanese. Oh, Korean. Korean as well. Korean. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, and, um, but so I'm at this Polish convention, and it was a special game set up where it was me, the person who had just that morning won the Polish national champion, Munchkin national championship. Oh, wow. And two other players. And I actually ended up winning that game because everybody else was concentrating on the Polish national champion. And so <laughs> I think this means I am now the king of Poland. <laughs> I, I think it's in the rules somewhere. It's got to uh, be. Yeah. Yes. Speaking I'm of, one... of uh, uh, very special Munchkin setups, uh, someone said their favorite, their most precious card is the Star Munchkin, Heart of the Anomaly. Anyone oh else have one? Yes. So yes. I actually know the story behind the card because I was working at the convention that commissioned it. Oh, uh, wow. Uh, nice. Me and the uh, the web designer at the time, Fade, yeah. uh, were both working for Linucon in Austin, Texas, which was a combination tech, gaming, anime, nerddom convention. And the guest of honor that year was Will Wheaton. And so they, uh, the convention asked Steve if, hey, could we design and print a Munchkin card for this convention as the promo for the convention? Mm -hmm. um, and, and have be a star Munchkin focused on the Heart of the Anomaly and have a, a little Will Wheaton in the background on it with Joey yep. having the Heart of the Anomaly. Yeah. And Steve approved it if we did all the printing and everything else and helped us with some of the graphic design and stuff. So like 300 of them were made ever because that's yes. how many people we expected to show up. And the premise of getting this card to Will was there was a celebrity munchkin game. It was going to be uh, him, Howard Taylor, Steve, and one of the other guests were going to be playing munchkin at the table together in the celebrity game. And they were someone was supposed to get an autograph from Will right beforehand and make sure to walk off with the pen. <laughs> Everyone else at the table had a pen. And the card was plus one bonus, plus three assigned by Will Wheaton. And he was supposed to, it was it was stacked so he would get it in his hand, start the game with, and he wouldn't have a pen to sign it, and everybody else would have one and they had to make a deal to them. <laughs> and he didn't notice it at first until he played it and read it and said plus one, plus three signed by Will Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> and also that card is the most expensive munchkin card that's ever been bought. Uh, one card went was on eBay. Uh, 10, uh, 15 years ago, something like that, went for a thousand dollars. They um, they went for a lot because it was a small release. We eventually yeah. released it as a shirt here officially. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that it could, so people could have the heart of the anomaly yes. with a rule yes. associated with it. Um, but it's yeah, been, the, it, the the other funny story about that is the reason why it was so rare is the commission organizers that had the extras. Yes. Like lost them in a move, so they were like. Um, 50 or so extras that just vanished into ether somewhere. Gosh, Andrew sent me three, and it's like I was so thankful for that. Um, it's like, okay, this is great. Because I don't, I, I am, I'm not a well organized person. Um, <laughs> so I do not have a complete set of even the stuff I've done, let alone what everybody has done. Um, I had all of my Munchkin cards at the time in binders so that I could reference them easily enough and just and unfortunately last year my old studio flooded and I lost a bunch of stuff and I just don't no. know yeah it's 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 oh it's okay nobody got hurt it's only stuff yeah and stuff in the end doesn't matter that much but I just don't know if I've got it in my heart to just start re-sleeving every Munchkin card for future reference <laughs> right. um now, another really fun, uh, like the Decemberists, the band, the Decemberists, are big gamers. Mm. And another really thrilling, uh, for me, Munchkin experience was drawing a card for them, which they then gave out at their shows about five years ago. I think I saw uh, that, yeah. Wow. The Cavalry Captain card. And when they came to Madison uh, for their show, they invited me... Um, they invited me backstage, my wife and I, before the show, to game with them. Oh, and cool. We didn't actually play Munchkin at the time because, you know, 
they would all like each other when they go on stage. Uh, <laughs> we ended Didn't up playing a game Apple. called Illumat? Yes, Illumat, um, designed by Keith Baker. Uh, this was after that. Um, but they bring their own gaming table with them on their tour bus. And oh, you cool. open it out, and it's like got all these autographs on it. And it was so cool. Oh, that's um, nice. Cool. Also, by the way, um, another Munchkin promo card story. Uh, because of Munchkin, I bought my own art back from a charity um, because I could not bear not to have it. So what happened was uh, 10 years ago, something like that, uh, time has no meaning anymore, you know, since the pandemic. But I think it was about a decade ago, the North American Discworld Convention was here in Madison. Ooh. And Sir Terry Pratchett was going to be a guest of honor. And we got permission to do a Discworld Munchkin card as a giveaway. Cool. And it was the luggage. And so I drew the luggage and got to meet. Uh, and so um, they, everybody who was at the convention got one of these cards. And I got to meet Sir Cherry. And I just was you know i'm such a huge fan of his writing i mean it's it's so hard not to be it's like oh my gosh every page there are two or three great lines it's like there's no filler in a discworld novel um oh yeah uh and i asked sir cherry if he would sign the original artwork uh of the of the uh luggage um and it would be for charity and he agreed to do this and he signs it and I'm like still buzzed from having met him. And I get home, and this art was going to go to the UK Discworld convention. And I know knew the auctioneer, uh, Brian Nesbitt, um, who is just a great friend. Is anybody who goes to a convention in the UK or in Ireland must have seen Brian. Just an amazing human being. Uh, and about you know, a few days before the convention, I'm sitting here with my own dang art in my hands, which has been signed by Terry Pratchett. <laughs> and I give Brian a call. It's like, Brian, yes, John. So about this artwork, yes, John. Do you think it, what do you think it would go for at the, at the auction? Like, a thousand dollars and brian says yeah it's probably you probably get about a thousand dollars okay brian how about if i just buy it <laughs> i'll send the check you know I'll, I'll transfer the money to the charity auction and brian says that sounds very fair john you, you do that <laughs> and so i spent a thousand dollars buying my own art back just because i could not bear to give up this piece that Terry Pratchett is signed. It's signed, but yeah, it's like Terry Pratchett. Yes. Yeah. I um, mean, for charity. <laughs> it was, and, it's, and Munchkin has raised so much for charity. Uh, when I go to Ireland uh, for the WarfCon convention, uh, or my Bike the Barns, like Munchkin is huge with my uh, the whole Bike the Barns charity bike ride I do here in Madison, uh, which raises uh, money uh, to help uh, the low income, low income and elderly households. Uh, it essentially raises a lot of money uh, for help combat food insecurity, and uh, the money goes towards buying CSA community-supported agricultural farm boxes from uh, local farms. So low-income households get this wonderful, fresh, uh, farm-fresh food. Farmers get money. Yeah, and you support the local oh, farms. And... Yes, yeah. Great. And early on, I would like the first ride, I asked Steve if I could do this uh, postcard. So anybody who backed my ride at $25 would get this postcard that I suggested would let, um, I, I thought it might have some around here, uh, uh, that would let them start a game of Munchkin at second level. And Steve said, oh, no, 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 let's make him start at third level. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... Every year, uh, this will be the 12th year of the ride, I've done this special Munchkin postcard that lets you start a game at third level. 
and uh, as as a group, uh, the people who've supported my part of this ride, we've raised over two hundred thousand dollars as That's of great. last year's ride, and a huge part of that is because of Munchkin. And so, if uh, on the ride, if somebody donates, uh, and I only do this for a couple of slots, but if they donate two thousand dollars, I will draw them, and we. Uh, Steve Jackson games, if you don't mind me including myself here, uh, <laughs> will print them up, and so they will get officially printed, officially official uh, cards of themselves as as uh, Munchkin uh, uh, characters. Doing you know the cards will have different uh, powers. Steve will you know design the card, or Andrew would have designed the card, um, and so Munchkin has raised just a massive amount uh, for charity, and not just this one charity, but well, yeah, no, at Liberty yeah, Con, I, Steve does every year. They do a big charity card every year for that convention. WarpCon. Mm-hmm. I'll go to Ireland at WarpCon and we'll auction off a, you know, again, up here on a Munchkin card. Um, so, yeah, for, for as evil a game as Munchkin is, it does a lot of good. It really does. <laughs> I did see a question here. Let's see if I can... thought I had it in the scroll. I may have lost it. Uh... The dice. Well, I guess while he's looking for that, I did have a quick one. Do you yeah. have a favorite one of somebody bringing you a blank card that you've designed? Do you have a favorite that um, you've done over the years that, or like one that stands out to you? Yeah. No. Here's the thing that stands out about the blank cards. For a start, <laughs> I was at I was at um, Spiel in Essen. About 12, 13 years ago, and God bless them, Pegasus Publishing does a great job with Munchkin in Germany, but Mm. that year, they were handing out blank Munchkin cards as the freebies um, to come to the booth to get a Munchkin card, and I was supposed to do two one-hour signings each day, uh, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, but also, they didn't have anybody stopping the line. Uh, cutting off the line. And so these, with everybody with their own blank Munchkin card, uh, this turned into a, and I'm not making this up, day one was six hours. Oh, God. Day two no. was six and a half hours. Day three was seven hours. Wow. And at the time, uh, like somebody in the middle of day one brought me some cookies and some mead. <laughs> and, oh, no. and it's like that's pretty much all I had for the six hour period it's like I would just you know say guys I need a break and so I'd go out and have some meat some cookies mm-hmm. and I'm not even a smoker and I would like have like a drag and a cigarette and it's like mm-hmm. oh my god this. and the funny thing is like there are thousands of cartoonists who would kill to have a problem like that it's like a six hour oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean that's honestly for Neil Gaiman that's breakfast Right, you know, right. But, um, <laughs> but it was just, it was so intense. And at the end of the day, I would be like, guys, come back tomorrow. The drawing is going to be much better. And so I'm really, I'm really happy that most people are satisfied with like a duck of doom. If I draw the duck on the card, no, no matter what country I'm in, I can be in Italy, I can be in Germany, I can be in Brazil, I can be in Australia. And you look up, and as soon as I see the duck, their eyes just widen and it's like oh it's the duck it's the duck and you've just made somebody's day with this tiny little drawing Mm -hmm. and you know i tell people it is such a privilege to be in this business because we're here to make people happy to make people let people have fun to bring some kind of joy into you know people's lives and that is an absolute absolute flipping privilege uh to have something like Munchkin, which makes so many people so happy all over the world, uh, that's incredibly special. It really is. I can't even yeah. imagine having that kind of an influence on a community. Um, it's nice. And the other great thing is, when I get back to Madison, I'm totally anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> it, you get the best thing. of both worlds. Yes, yes. You really do. There's a bookstore in Madison that won't even pick up my books. It's like, oh, come on, guys. In Germany, they're killed for this. <laughs> the Keanu Reeves of the nerd world. <laughs> Walk into the environment, immediately recognized. Baseball cap, no one knows. <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, occasionally, I mean, the thing, 
uh, when I'm like, sometimes people will have very complicated instructions for a blank card. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I'm at a convention, I always do them for free. It's like, that's just one of my rules. It's like, nope, I'm here. I'm here to make people happy. If somebody wants to send me a card, I'll charge for that just because I've got work. I should be yeah. doing when I'm at home. Right. You, you haven't um, already blocked that time out. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I will try to draw people as much in characters. And sometimes, like the best cards are when I, I'm not a great caricaturist, but sometimes, you know, it's like, oh my God, it actually looks like them. <laughs> and, you know, not, not because I got the mustache right, but because I've actually got, like, the angles of, you know, in the same way that when uh, somebody, a celebrity appears on The Simpsons, they are drawn in a Simpsons style, but they're still recognizably that celebrity. Yeah. Uh, so I think my favorites of the blank cards are those times when a drawing of somebody comes out really nicely. Cool. Yeah, actually, the, the question I was looking for was about the blank cards. Yeah. So, and I, I remember we, we've had to, uh, at various booths, when Steve and you are there, with like, all right, because uh, there was also the blank card of, like, Steve writes the rule for you. Yes. And like, yes. we had to, like, limit both of those, like, okay, we're not, it's only this long, we don't have this much time, so and the you other can have thing three is, things signed or one of those cards. Yeah, I would be at Gen Con, and Steve and Andrew would be there. And I would be the holdup. There'd be a line. And it's like Steve and Andrew would have their little things quickly. And I'm there drawing, like trying to get, you know, trying not to be the, <laughs> the, uh, the road bump in this very efficient uh, signing line. Um, there was a, I was at a convention. I forget where it was. I think it might have been Ireland. Uh, it could have been a one warp con. And a guy brings out a blank card for me to sign. And there were about maybe at this point, 10, 20 people in line. So there was still a way to go as far as drawings are concerned. And the person behind him said, oh, a blank card. I wish I'd brought one. And the guy pulls out a stack of blank cards. And he said, oh, I brought a lot. And I just, oh, looked, no. up, I just looked up and I immediately said, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, having flashbacks to S and oh, no. oh, so was it gosh. day one or day two yeah. that you had to start wearing the wrist brace at S? <laughs> I never, I never needed to, thank goodness. But it was really like it, towards the end of the days, the line quality was not the same as the start yeah. of the days. Um, no, absolutely. And the uh, the problem uh, uh, again with something like that is. If the if a line doesn't have an actual cutoff, mm -hmm. once the line starts getting short, that's when people start jumping in. Oh, look, the line's short. We can get in now. Yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah. it was sucking out of one or two people, and then there'd be like ten more people all of a sudden yeah. showed up. So uh, yeah, we, the next we year, have found out ourselves you have to do <laughs> line management when any time yeah. do that stuff. Oh my gosh, a Munchkin super fan, Jan Hendricks, um, was at us in the year afterwards, and I owe my life to him because. He uh, he had his grandfather's World War One helmet, no lie, with him, and wow. he was the person cutting off the line and being the the hard ass. Because um, <laughs> I can't be, I cannot be a hard ass at all. It's like you know, I I literally was going, guys, please come back tomorrow. Not no, we're stopping now. You will have to come back tomorrow. It's like uh, if you wouldn't mind, the drawing will be better if you do it tomorrow. Uh, but Yanni, Yanni was like, oh, line's over. Back, yeah, I know Jan's great taking care of people. Though, but he took care <laughs> of us when we went over when I went over there one year. Uh, it was, yes. it was uh, he's great yes. at like making sure everything's handled. Right before the pandemic, um, I was coming back from a convention in Zagreb, and I had a layover in Amsterdam, so I took an extra day because uh, Amsterdam, and I met up with Jan, and I actually was able to finally buy him dinner for saving my life a decade oh, later wow. at Essen. <laughs> Oh yeah, Al, you've met Young before, yeah. <laughs> so, the one of the weird things is in Europe, when I'm doing a signing, uh, most people in Europe, be it be it in London or at Luca um, or in Essen, they want you to sign the inside of the box. They don't want the box cover signed. Whereas in the U.S. It's all about signing the box cover. 
Yeah. Um, and so I have learned now just like to hold my pen like this as I'm See, flying inside a box. Reach down in. Yes. It is a it is one of my few unique skill sets is to be able to draw inside <laughs> a box cover. Now I don't that know is a skill. this box, this coming box is like, wow, you know, I'm gonna need a very long pen. <laughs> so Daryl said it's only four and a half inches deep, so it's on par close to the old Munchkin monster box, monster oh, boxes. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, yep, yep. So well, a little more than usual, but not but not too bad. Yeah, and it's, it's way, wider, so this is one of those second... like fun size pens. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. Um, <laughs> I loved working on the cover. I think this was—I think it was Steve's idea. I'm not sure, and if it wasn't, you know, whoever's idea it was, mm -hmm. to uh, to play off of the Dungeons and Dragons Red Box cover. Yeah, the old Red Box. Yeah. Yeah. That was a genius idea. I had when I first uh, posted that on my Patreon, it was like people just went crazy about it. And it's like it was great. It was it was fun to draw. It was, um, and it was actually the second cover. Uh, there was the first cover, which was fine. It was a perfectly fine cover. Um, but yeah, as soon as somebody mentioned the red box, it's like, yeah, we got to do that. We absolutely yeah. have to do that. It looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> the I love working with the art department at Steve Jackson Games. It's like they they make my little scratchings look so dang good. I mean, <laughs> you got some really talented folks there, and I am. I mean, just yeah, just seeing the colors, uh, seeing seeing the whole thing looking really yeah. spiffy and amazing. Yeah, so Alex and Ben and Gabby and Sabrina do a fantastic job of bringing stuff to life. Oh yeah, it's just amazing. Like I really, really can't praise them enough. It is just ridiculous. I knew this project was coming, but I hadn't seen the artwork for it yet. So when I yeah. saw it on our sneak peek last week, oh, I was geeking so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Yay. Uh, mine too. Oh. My childhood is just extended to now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I just it keeps like coming back in like different iterations, and it was just ah, it was such ah. a heartwarming moment to see it. <laughs> uh, well, seriously, whenever I get like my my work day now starts at five o'clock in the morning. I wake oh, wow. up, out goes. I mean, I love it actually. I I used to be a night person, but I get much more work done in the morning. And so I make a cup of coffee, go straight to my drawing table. And once I've got the pen, once, once I'm putting pen to paper, it's like, I'm just the luckiest guy in the world. I, I yeah. adore this job. It's funny because that same thing happened to me when I started working for the warehouse department here. Because oh, yes. I used to work for in and out before this. And I was adamant, I will not get out of bed before 10 a.m. It's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they were like, okay, well, we started at 7. And... <laughs> I can't not get excited to wake up in the morning now. And I was a night bird beforehand. Yeah. So I'm like right there with you. <laughs> and the weird thing is like when I start at five, theoretically, I should be able to quit by two, but I just want to keep drawing. It's, right. you know, it's, it's just like having the old line about, you know, having a job you love and you'll never work it in your life. Oh, no, I mean, it's still work, but it's like, it's so fun and it's like I, it just like every day it's a little bit different there's another card there's another expansion there's something mm -hmm. with a little bit of a twist um the golem uh uh set which i did right before launching into i think i think golem came first or maybe it was like some of the big box art that came first mm -hmm. um you know if you're able to work a little bit a little bit ahead um you know steve will get uh, some notes to me about a set, and even if the set's not due for a month or two, um, it makes a huge difference getting this up in early because I can start sketching and do uh, do some character design. Um, and a set like Gollum, I think, really benefits from that. Or uh, Paranoia, kind of the same. Now I'm drawing Paranoia, and mm -hmm. it's just uh, can't wait for that one. Yeah, oh, we yes. we were talking with that with Steve last yeah. week about the the. Beginnings of much compared to Ayana. He was he was starting to had some written had some art to off to you. Yep. And, and uh, I just sent uh, reminiscing about it. A couple of days, I sent him the first sixteen, I think, cards. Just you know, uh, to get some general directional advice, make sure it's how he sees it. Um, 
yeah, it, it, this is this is a really fun set. It, it's going to have to be. It's it's Paranoia is as much a ridiculous game as Munchkin is, so the two together yes. are going to be fantastic. Oh yeah, yes. it's it'll be the Reese's peanut butter cup of gaming. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't want to keep it too long. No worries. Uh, Actually, I've got so, to get back to drawing. You can see the drawing table back there. This is, <laughs> this is where so, the magic happens. <laughs> so we are, just to let you know, before you head out, we are almost at 2,000 backers, and we're over $250,000 in the campaign already no. in the first hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's, Hello. That's insane. Holy cow. So hey, thank wow. you for coming on, John, and helping Thanks. us uh, launch this project and talking to us for so, a bit. So great seeing you again. I think it was for NordCon was the last time I saw you. Uh, probably, yeah, that's probably the last time we saw each other because you haven't yeah, been out at anyway. Gen Con in the last couple of years. So. Right, yeah. I, I, I may not be this year. I hope to. We'll see. Fingers crossed. We'll but... see. If so, I'll see you there. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks again, John. Congratulations, Thanks. folks. This is a lot you. of fun. And yeah, it's unbelievable how well it's doing. All right. Thanks so much. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So let's go ahead and... and, and uh, yeah. You guys are good. Cool. Kill that so I don't have to hear myself in there. So... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was quite the echo. <laughs> there was a little bit of echo going on, but you guys couldn't hear it, which is the important part. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, that was our chat with John. I know we missed a, uh, a lot of chat while that was going on. We tried to keep up a little bit, yeah. but well, obviously we were, we were getting John to talk with you and stuff. But yeah, so we have done uh, a lot in the campaign while this has been going on. You guys have been doing gangbusters on that. Thank you so much. Yeah. I see Daryl's been in there answering your questions. Thank you, Daryl, for, for keeping track on that. And for keeping up um, with the kick, the the kit. <laughs> the, the backer kit thank you that's yes, the one my brain just stopped working um thank you so much for one. keeping up with us on the backer kit i know it's been flying by for you daryl and i imagine you're just running rampant and i we all appreciate you very much so shout out to daryl yes daryl <laughs> who's going to be tracking all this yes i know we've gone through what three boosted goals now at this point three stretch goals something like that because we uh, did what was it somebody saying promo pack two is jumping up well, let's there... see, i'll scroll through the project here see what we got um i'm gonna have to refresh it first so swag the enamel pins uh swag promo or is swag loaded die oh here here we go goals at a hundred thousand we added another pin so we're Another enamel pin. And spike now. Uh, well, you're gonna vote on. Oh, I guess. Yeah. On which pin it's gonna be, uh, and then at 110, we add promo card reprints added to the big box. Ten trend promo cards added to it. Uh, at 125,000, we added a loaded die. Uh, we think this time it's for a real loaded die. Every backer will receive one loaded die, nearly assuring them the roll they want, as long as nobody notices. And that's the backer only. That's a backer kit exclusive. Uh, then at 175, which we're not to yet, right? Scroll up. Oh, no, sorry. We're at 271. We are definitely up at 175. Uh, so at 175, which is going over these backer kit rewards here, uh, the game was going to come with 14 millimeter dice, but the 175 is going to upgrade them to 19 millimeter dice. Uh, so they are going to be the larger D6s in the big box. Woohoo! At two hundred thousand uh, dollars, we'll upgrade, replace the standard standees in the big box to be meeples made of wood. Twelve custom meeples in six different colors. Heck yeah! And two designs with spike and, spike and flower. We don't have the final designs for those yet. No. At two twenty-five, a lanyard. It's a backer kit exclusive, uh, so if you back it, you'll get this. It'll be a nice munchkin lanyard added on. Uh, available uh, only for backers, but it may be available as a campaign add-on, or it might not. It will depend, but the backers will get it free. Uh, 235, four more bookmarks added to the box for everybody. <laughs> At 260, which we have passed, a big coin, a backer kit exclusive, a challenge coin, a first player token, a D2, no matter the use, it's a big coin, it'll be nice and heavy. Um, so this oh will God, be. I, a, I do like. I, I don't know if that's the final design or not, but that looks cool already. Uh, I want one of those. I know I want one too. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta go to the backer kit now. <laughs> and then at two seventy, which we have crossed now, is ten more cards 
There's 10 more promo cards we printed added to the box. And then uh, our next goal is uh, even bigger dice at 320,000 if we get there today. Uh, we will add, we'll replace the 19 millimeter D Munchkin D6 with the Munchkin, with 25 millimeter Jumbo D6s. Jesus. And, uh. As if your dice are, that you're gonna, that the first, what, 100? 1750. 1750. The first 1750 of you aren't gonna have big enough dice. <laughs> Well, it's just that's just a little. These are the ones you actually roll. Oh, okay. we're not gonna make them this big. It's twenty five okay. millimeter. What? Maybe, maybe. I don't think we're planning on that. I think. No, but, no, 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 no. I feel so bad for anybody who's got a glass table. <laughs> Backer nineteen ninety nine. It's meeples. It's meeples. It's big. It's heavy. The wood. It's wood. It's meeples. It's meeples. It's better. Oh no, it's, it's, it's bad. It's, it's good. It's big. It's heavy. It's wood. It's meeples. It's meeples. It's better than bad. It's, it's good. good. Yeah. It's the old uh, Ren and it's, it's log, reference. yeah. Oh, that's why back I was like, the, what? The what is this? Back in the long, long ago when we watched cartoons. <laughs> when oh. they actually had TV shows that was not reality TV on MTV. Uh, <laughs> no such thing as too many dice. No such thing as too, too big, big dice. Uh, there's too big to roll on your table. There is that. Like, if you have a glass table, there's a limit. Oh, uh, Ren and Stimpy reference. You okay, to be got real it. careful, yeah. Hopes for massive spike head D6 in the same vein as the D10. I don't, but keep backing and see. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we don't have any plans for D6s that large. Um, I think I told the story last week about how those came to play in the first place. Um, yeah, it was something kind of like a manufacturing misunderstanding or something like we that. Were getting, it wasn't even that it was an error. It was just a misunderstanding. Yeah, we were getting a prototype made of a, of a big D10 to do, to do level counting. And we told them we wanted an 80 millimeter D10. And they said, cool, 80 millimeter D10, we can do that. We'll make you a sample. We'll send it to you. <laughs> and we got a box that said, hey, we sent you a sample die. We picked up the box and went, how many samples? Yeah. <laughs> and then we opened the box and it was it was this but red. And we went, um, I mean, hang on. <laughs> I mean, it's. That's... And and what we found out was, uh, the people we'd been used to working with on dice, uh, measure especially for D sixes, measure the width of the die. It's mm -hmm. eighty millimeters or twenty five millimeters or sixteen millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, this company, and it may be a different even with them, but the mm -hmm. D sixes that is the size of the die is the size of a die face. Mm -hmm. When we told them eighty millimeters, they thought eighty millimeters across the face of the die. Of, one face of the die it says all right cool each face is 80 millimeters wide which means the die is this big <laughs> um and it because in a d6 <laughs> those two things are the same the width of the die and the width of right. the face um but when you get here we found out we were using two different that is measurements, a very different metric <laughs> uh, different metrics. and uh that is and then we went well you know it's not what we were it's intending, but that's pretty nice. Now I want to see an 80 millimeter D6. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to be about that. So it, it's only going to be. Well, hallelujah for the sake well, like of the giant die. Yeah. It's, it's still pretty big, but workable. Because uh, again, the, the, it, the face is, is the entire width on a D6. I have room in my a room in my house. He's only for rolling very, very, very big dice. The floors are four. Uh, Unfortunately, the red are long gone at this point. That was our first run, so we do not have any red. Yeah, yeah. Those I were, wish those, those were the first were run, color. and and we people were interested in them, so which is why we printed more in new colors, um, black, blue, and green. Yeah, uh, black, blue, and green. Um, unfortunately, this bot this version is only in English. It will only be in English. <laughs> So if you do want to order internationally, it will be coming in English. <laughs> yeah, and we're printing this one. We're printing it in English. This is not something that our, our translation partners are doing at this time. Um, this is a project that just we're doing, and we, we print our games in English here because that's where we sell most of our games. Yes. <clears throat> uh, Back post shows rainbow dice. How can we add this? Uh, the the multicolored D6s are coming in the set. And So uh, I think they're specifically talking about like rainbow, rainbow. Well, the, uh, the sh what it's showing on the page is these yeah. right here. Right. So the the RG Biv colors, the ones that each dice are going to be an individual color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are those are how the dice are coming in the set already. 
Uh, but I know that we have had rain, like actual like one dice is a rainbow dice, and I think that's what they're trying to talk about. Maybe they're asking if they can get more. Yeah, could be. Well, we'll, we'll have to clarify that, and we can maybe answer that question better. There are a single die with rainbows on them. Yeah. Uh, I will have to. That may be something that is an add-on. Uh, it's, I don't see it on the main page. So I don't think that's something that's coming in the product itself. If we have it, that'll be one of the things that you can add as an add-on product from things that we already have. Uh, so quantities will likely be limited on those two that we have on hand. Dice and accessories below this uh, They will probably appear in the backer kit once the pledge manager goes away. Yes. Oh, yeah. Those are yeah. Those are for a lot of the dice and accessories. Those are add-ons. Mm -hmm. Those are in the whole uh, add-on section. So those will be things that you can add on to the campaign from the add-ons after you finalize your pledge or to, when you when you go to finalize your pledge yeah so those are basically oh, i don't want to go back i just want to reload the page <laughs> uh all right so we are at 3 30 listen to all your comments on the dice <laughs> daryl we hear you it just because some <laughs> older promos like the ttd stuff uh so pro so a lot some of these promos are reprinted promos uh, I don't know if they've been had all of them selected or not, but we've been adding more via stretch goals. But I think they've all been determined which ones we're doing. But that would be a question for Daryl if those are finalized or if there's mm -hmm. options to to uh, pull more of those out. Um, 19 mil, having, having the 19 millimeter discussion dice discussion now. There are several layer room of resin dice. will be in the add-on store after the campaign. We got that. Mm -hmm. Got our listening. We're, we are listening to dice comments. Okay, so uh, oh, we're, did I just freeze it on my browser? That's just my browser. Uh, okay. Pricing promos that are associated with a specific event slash days and licensings aren't likely to make it in. Yeah, if it's like a specific convention or if it was a specific uh, licensed product, those are ones we often don't have the rights to print more than the initial uh, printing we did for them, or mm -hmm. they can be uh tricky to track those down and find out who can approve them especially for smaller conventions because yeah. those are often like those people do that thing once a year and then are uncontactable the rest of the year a yeah. lot of times uh so it's but if it's something that we've done just for us uh those are more likely to be available uh all cards non-hollow or are you planning on or thinking about making some of the promos hollow uh, yeah, so not only a lot of accessories are not added into the the uh, add-on store yet. Uh, those are all going to be added by the time the campaign completes in mm -hmm. 28 days, I believe it says. That's what I thought it said. It's 28 days. Scroll up. Yeah, 28 days. So we were focused on the launch. We get some things in there, <laughs> but there will be a lot more stuff in the add-on store after Daryl's had some time to go through and backfill it with a lot of the accessories and stuff and figure out how many we can offer based on what counts we have in the warehouse. And, and all those things. Some of them will have to be limited because we, we might like, oh, we found one one last box of this promo or set yeah. of die, so we can we can do that. Or, you know, this extra, you know, we found like one more box of Munchkin Booty 3, or Ships yeah. for the Stars, which is not a thing that we made. I just made the that title off the top of my head. Don't look for it. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, they, the warehouse likes to hide things from us sometimes. So I know every once in yeah, a while. Not the staff, the building itself. No, no, the building itself. It should be its own. Like John, if you're still in here, like please make a warehouse. Like <laughs> it's, it's where, a, a warehouse. <laughs> but no, the warehouse likes to hide things from us sometimes. So every once in a while, we'll just find promo cards hiding in a spot that we didn't know that they were at. So. Yeah. Uh, Daryl says the campaign add-on store is only for John Kavalik items. Afterwards, you get afterwards you'll get everything else in the pledge manager. So these are only for things that John has done the art on right now. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Other stuff will get added on after the campaign closes. Gotcha. You'll still be able to do it before you finalize. Your <laughs> <laughs> Starts sketching warehouse cards. Thank you, John. <laughs> Where? <huh? laughs> What's your most, what's our most memorable Munchkin moment? This certainly seems an awesome project. Hope you have the best success with it. Um, memorable Munchkin moments. I mean, mine... I can barely remember this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine is probably when we had, uh, I think it was during an uh, International Tabletop Day or something in, in production with uh, that whole thing, was Steve had come for a Munchkin promo, like he was coming to help run a game or something like that at Wonka's 
and he had just gotten his first Tesla and was like the winning prize was get get a ride with Steve, Steve and, his and his Tesla. And so everybody was like losing their mind and was playing in it. And then inevitably by accident, I think uh, I was the one who was working and my sister was the one who was playing and she ended up uh, coming second place or something like that. So she got to ride in the Tesla. And then I got jealous, so he took me on a ride for the, in the <laughs> Tesla. And then subsequently, I don't know how this happened, but my my sister and I both drove Steve's Tesla at one point because the the AGV right next door had shut down, so there was like a whole like eighty percent of this parking lot was completely empty. empty. Yeah, and so we were just like, oh my god! And I've never I've wanted a Tesla since that day because it was such a seamless drive in that car. I was like, it's like driving water. I don't understand. <laughs> But this was like 10 years ago before Tesla was like, it's crazy thing that it is now. So it was a whole new ball of like interesting for me. But the seeing that many people excited just to see, even see Steve in the building was like, oh, this is a big deal. <laughs> um, BC says, I've never played any Munchkin games before, but I'm very, very excited to try it with a big box. Well, it's like good. This is a really yes. good entry point. It'll yes. get you a good solid starter for everything. Absolutely. It's got all of, at least all of my favorite expansions in this. I, I don't know about you, but like seeing such a complete version of the game with the different expansions that are in it. Like, yeah. like it's, it's, I mean, it's not the complete game because it's no, 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 no. But like, but if, like but, you were gonna pick out your your first set. It's kind got of that games. good core yeah. and all the early expansions that that really built on that core of Munchkin. Yeah, and then it has the things that uh, it adds in most of the new mechanics we've added in, like the yeah. large ones, like the dungeons are the the cards that affect everybody at the table, yeah. sort of thing. While you're in yeah. that dungeon, and then the bosses are the you know fight a boss to have an alternate win mechanic. Yeah, and then the side two side quest expansions are you can work at completing these three side quests to get extra stuff going on yeah. during the game. So those are all uh, all the new points where we added significant new elements to the game Yeah, that were kind of more than just, oh, another class that does a different thing. This yeah. is like added a new whole type of thing to the game. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so I think it provides a really good sampler yeah. of the core of Munchkin and the major ideas we kind of hung on to it. Yeah. Um, all in the in just the fantasy set. Obviously, if you jump to all the other things, you've yeah, got, exactly. got other stuff going on. But I think just the card mix in that first set is a really good mix to get a feel for all of the major ways that Munchkin plays out. Yeah. And then you know, obviously, there's still plenty more to mix in. Like you, you want to add druids and stuff to your game. You still need that. If yeah, you, exactly. Yeah, you want to yeah. go play pirates but... or starships or everything else. You've got all those things to work with. I still have my sepia colored set. Oh my gosh, I haven't wow. even looked at that set in a second. Uh, but the big box is is really good. Like going back to like John's promos and stuff like that. This is a really good like heart of Munchkin. And it's got all of my favorite mechanics in it, at the very least. Uh, Daryl says, my most my most memorable moment is twofold. One, I really enjoyed working on and helping develop the CCG. And two, suggesting the idea of side quest to Andrew so many years ago. Yeah. The CCG was fun. That was a, a uh, the real attempt to make a Munchkin game, like that wasn't Munchkin, but was a two-player way to play a Munchkin-style game. <laughs> um and i think it didn't catch on as as much as we hoped but it was a really fun expansion i uh i thought the characters were really evocative like i yeah. fell in love with the orc bard the instant i saw it yeah and the whole bard class in that game and it had a really interesting uh bluffing mechanic which once you got into was fun but it was a really different thing that yeah. um a lot of normal ccg players couldn't really get their head around initially because bluffing people like Bidding and bluffing while you're trying to summon a creature is yeah. is unusual. I would, like it's something you haven't seen in anything else yeah. before, um, and so a lot of people it it wasn't real intuitive right off the bat. But I thought it was a really clever mechanic. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. How does this box compare to the previously released monster boxes? Well, now that we've had, grab me that box and that tape. There's a tape it. measure on that table right here on the corner of that it. table by the door. <laughs> we can find out. So. I'm coming up with our now recently sold out box. So these are these are the Munchkin Monster boxes, which we used to be our, our large storage solution we had for Munchkin available. I think it's Shark Love Baby was what this one was called or something like that. Love Shark Baby. Love Shark Baby. So this is um 
just about four and a quarter. Yeah. By ten and a half by ten. So it's going to be pretty close to yeah. this size, actually. For what we currently have as, as the specs, it's going to be pretty close to this size. Um, not exact, necessarily, because this is, they this may is just... Not, this is not... This is not the box you're going to get, but this it's going to not... be... It's not your beautiful house. But <laughs> it's roughly... It's going to be roughly, like, to, to scale, you're going to be pretty close to, to this box as the project currently stands. If we have to add, you know, I don't know if, what the stretch goals go to, but yeah. if we have to add, you know, another 2,000 cards, it'll obviously get bigger. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if that's in the cards or not as you guys unlock the stretch goals. Uh, um, but yeah, so roughly about here, which will hold, you know, approximately four of these, maybe five, you fit five of these. Yeah. I think you could fit I think five dice or two thousand cards. Yeah, right? a lot. <laughs> well, we we won't leave that out there so people don't get confused by just seeing it while we're not talking about it. Oh, fun fact. Uh, let's see, we got that. John, fun fact: there is no Munchkin card I know of that makes a player lose or skip a turn. Oh, uh, that is interesting. Uh, Death kind of does it, but but it's not entirely the same thing. Uh, some of the, let's see, I hope all the marbles, we did Munchkin Batman, we noticed we did Munchkin Batman, there are any other IPs that we're planning to work with, at least we can talk about. So that's the thing. Um, licensing deals in general, you can't talk about till they're done, till they're, they're, the deals are done and signed and announced, because basically both, both, both things are secret to people, and things can change, and, and lawyers have to work things out. So we can't tell you about anything that we haven't announced already. Now, what's coming up that we have announced we can talk about because we we're coming up with a uh, Munchkin Shadow Run. Yes. Yep. Soon that one's uh, decently long in development, and in early development, as we talked about last week with Steve and this week with John, is Munchkin Paranoia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so those are both with two uh, other role playing tabletop role playing systems uh, that we're going to be lampooning with Munchkin. And of course, we did Munchkin Bat Munchkin C Jackson presents. Steve Jackson's Munchkin Presents Batman, full official title. Yeah. <laughs> We've done uh, to look up. Munchkin Pathfinder with a couple expansions already. Munchkin Warhammer 40K. Warhammer, Warhammer 40K. And, and Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar and expansions for both of those. Uh, do we have any other licensed ones in Munchkin here? Munchkin Mazes? Was that one? That, was, that, wasn't, that one's not a officially like That one's a, uh, a inspired That's one by. Of ours. That's yeah. one of ours, but inspired by a lot of the classic uh, D&D monsters. Ah, uh, okay. Early fantasy gaming okay, monsters. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, Conan was licensed. What are the dividers listed in the photos? So those are, are dividers that are going to go in the box. They have art yeah. on them. You, it's write your own label on them so that you can separate the cards out how you want to separate them. If you want to list doors and treasures, the treasures or if you, you want to separate them out by set. Yep. Um, however you want to, there are ways for, there are separators for you to organize your set however you want to organize them. You may find yourself no, getting down a dungeon floor. Oh no. Why would you bring up salad fingers? That's just trauma. <laughs> I, I, I haven't gotten there yet. Like, what a... collabs would you like to see? What is, Ooh, they want to see Munchkin Trogdor. That, that would be interesting. Trogdor would be fun. <laughs> um, Salad Fingers would be a nightmare. Um, but just in general. Just uh, <laughs> uh, as say there's a binding of Isaac with Salad Fingers. Oh, oh. I, I, that's that, that, cool. That's that's a cascading license. You don't even want to try to work those out. Okay. <laughs> so hear me out, My Little Pony. <laughs> I would love to see. I don't. Okay, we already have like ponies. We've got our unicorns and stuff like that. We're we're so close to that bridge. Can well, we you, just? Do you, do you know how close we are? I uh, know. So so, uh, Katie Cook, who does a lot of cute Munchkin stuff for us. Uh huh. Is the artist for the My Little Pony comic book, or one of the artists from the My Little Pony no. comic books? It's so, so the, this one... <laughs> Katie, please. <laughs> She's no, just the that. artist, yeah, yeah. But I, I would love to see like we, uh... we might have an idea if if we did that set and if we did that license, we might have an idea who should probably draw. Yeah, it, right? yeah. Like that would be like <laughs> the boys. That would be a... the See, that, that'd be super much <laughs> the boys, right? Oh. <laughs> It might be a little too extreme. That I think that might be cutting it. Yeah, cutie marks and dragons. Like, come on. Like, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> but 
that like to munchkin be per- flux i don't, I don't oh, know how you'd even do that munchkin flux you could be you could flux. now you could do a flux munchkin but i don't know yeah, about munchkin, i don't, I don't know, have munchkin flux i don't know if it could go the other way I mean, it could it's just a, it'd be take more work to figure out it's yeah. not yeah. a rule really like munchkin flux has now become flux munchkin yeah and yeah so again there's all sorts of things that people are telling us all the time oh you should do munchkin this munchkin that munchkin the other thing yeah uh but you know it's, especially for licensed things those are all up to it's all uh, the licensee. The licensee, yeah. like, are they looking for anybody to make games for them at uh-huh. all? Uh, is it is it us? Is it you know? Um, is it is it even something that's on their radar? Yeah. Um, you know, is munching the thing they want to mix it with? So there's all sorts of things. A lot of our a lot of the licensed things we've done that have come out for Munchkin, we do several of ours in house, like it's Pathfinder, Batman, yeah. Warhammer. Yeah. Uh, but we have a lot that came out with a partnership through USA Apply. Like previously USA Apply, now the Op. Yeah. Um, who did a lot of Munchkin license sets over the years. They licensed Munchkin from us, and then they licensed media properties from other people yeah. and made them into Munchkin sets while consulting on both ends. Um, so that's how they've gotten some of the, a lot of the... Uh, uh, like Adventure Time and uh, South Park, I know was one. Yeah, you know, a lot of those sets have come through through that partnership with yeah. them uh, rather than us directly licensing stuff because they kind of like, that's their their thing in games A lot of for a lot of their stuff is they do that pairing of find a game that they can license and find properties yeah. they can license that they can mix them well. Um, a set of five ponies that use a mini full-sized ponies in an adapt- adaptation set of rules. No, they already did that. Maybe. Well, I was just, sorry, I was just <laughs> no, reading I, your comment. I was like, what? I, I was reading that comment. Someone already did a, a uh, five, D&D 5e adaptation set in, I think, like, a fantasy game world that's in like one episode yeah. of the show where they play D D or something. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. then they did a. Uh, I know that in the uh, Friendship is Magic line, they also did a like a superheroes spoof mm-hmm. where they did like a Marvel Universe kind of a thing where all of the main six like turn into superheroes. If we have for the players, Red Dragon Inn Munchkin expansion is a perfect add-on for this set. That's true. Oh, we did yeah. we did a Spike and Flower set for yeah. Red Dragon Inn. Yep, yep, yep. As, as characters to mix in there. Um, yeah, well, it's like no. we do a lot. We do a lot of crossovers and things, but we can't obviously. I said we can't talk about anything that's not on the deck, and we can't promise anything because those are always a, um, you know, what do we have the time to work on? Who's actually looking to have their things maybe yeah, combined right, with it? And write not. your favorite companies and let them know you want to see. Look, yeah, tell them they should they should they should come do a Munchkin. I I don't know about Larion. I would love to see a Boulder's Gate, but that uh, with. <laughs> well, La- Larian is love done. I Larian with... to death. Larian Studios has said they they did Baldur's Gate. They're done. Yeah, D&D. they're I'm... going to make other games now. Yeah, and that's so they they don't have the rights to like D and D. Like that's again a cascading yeah. license thing. Yeah. So that would be a a again whole. Other... I would love to have a conversation with Larian about doing a Munchkin game. Maybe not specifically Baldur's Gate, but like because Larion has done such such amazing work with just even in the video game community, I would love to see what they would do with the tabletop. But I don't think their aspirations lend that way right no, now. No, but... Like, from what they've been saying, it's just as a gamer, what they've been yeah. saying is they're looking at, at bigger and better RPG things. Yeah. Uh, so back to the big box, which is what we're here for, is we are now over 2,000 backers, y'all. Thank Whoa. you so much. Uh, we have hit a $285,000 and we're closing in on our next stretch goal that our next stretch goal I think is a 320 uh and we are what we're almost two hours in y'all have been knocking out this out of the park um I'm gonna have so much work (laughs) good work oh the big die ran already you're entering your your car details oh no well Daryl said he'll keep an eye because sometimes pledges drop, sometimes yeah. people second guess, yeah. sometimes people's partners find out about a thing and they have to cancel them. And uh, <laughs> and and so slots open back up. Daryl said he'll reopen, he'll re-add the slots back to it Possibly and open back up. The slots. <laughs> um, yeah, be sure to check the next couple days at least. We have any insights into what storage yeah. items could be purchased in the backer kit survey at the end? Uh, Daryl said there's one slot open right now. Quick, go, hurry, get it. Get it. One more. One more. Go, go, um, go, go, go. Run. <laughs> Before Munchkin Presents Batman came out, I really thought the biggest prize of that would be Star Wars. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> well, if someone got it. Yeah. Uh, do we have any insight what stretch goal items could be purchased in the backer kit survey at the end? No, a lot of those we've said are going to be four backers and then maybe in the backer kit. 
I think that language is in there because we need to see how many people back them mm -hmm. versus how many we have or can print. And then that will determine if we have any extras put into the add-on store afterwards. Um, yeah. Some of those things are like, you know, because we're having to source these things in different spots, and it may be like, okay, we can only order in batches of a thousand. So if yeah. we have a thousand, we have nine hundred people that want this, then a hundred might go into the store afterwards. Yeah. If we have, you know, uh, nine hundred and ninety-nine that want this. We're probably going to print a thousand extra to sell the extra, you know, two or three in the store there. Um, so it'll it's going to depend on a lot of factors on what those go into. And we'll know that closer towards the end of the mm. campaign. We'll have better ideas of those today. Like I said, we had no idea exactly what to expect today. Like someone asked earlier what our projections were. We didn't have any. We just had hopes. No, hopes and, and dreams uh, that might fit into the big box. <laughs> right. And uh, you guys are knocking it out of the park. So figuring out trajectories of stuff, we're going to have to wait a few days to see where those are going to end up and what we think we'll be able to to put in there and far, uh, solidify the details more of. They who hesitate are lost. Uh, we have a question from the Swedish dog. Just a quick question about the cards in the campaign. Some sets have, have set symbols I've never seen before. Are those only for the big box or question mark? Uh, I think those are going to represent that they came in the big box. So I think all the cards in this set, uh, from what I'm seeing from these sample cards, have the uh, uh, the two people lifting uh, the the team lift symbol? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is that is the big box lift. Um, that, that is the big box set symbol. Is my guess here? Yeah. Uh, and so I'm guessing that all of these are going to have that symbol on them to denote that they are the ones that came in the big box. Uh, Daryl can correct confirm, me on that. Daryl just confirmed that yeah, is the big did. box card symbol. Yeah. So anything that comes in the box on this set the corset set <laughs> uh, of two three six bosses side quest side quest two those cards will have that on it to show that they came are the big box version of those cards so if you have duplicates you'll know which ones came with the big box and which ones went with your other ones i like how john's like i can but katie is the master <laughs> yeah, actually we have mock-ups of some of the new cards probably has the symbol on there if we don't see it oh do we yeah let's let's go let's go through the art we've got again uh so some of the new cards we've got the axolotl uh these are the only two cards that i have okay so but yeah you can see the 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 big box icon down there on the bottom of those cards and that's what you're going to see on the cards there in this set i believe so yeah it sounds like they're going to be on all the cards yeah. for this set even yeah. if those cards were part of another set before right right even ones from the base set, yes. Yeah. Because this this is its own set. Yeah, this is its own set. So when people are trying to sort things, you'll want to know, is that my is that my, you know, warrior card from my, my core set over here, or is that the warrior card from my big box set? Yeah. Um so I believe they're all gonna have that symbol on them for this printing. Sorry if this has been asked, but is there a reason we're doing this on backer kit instead of Kickstarter? Uh, we tried various campaigns at various places before. We had a pretty good experience with the, the Ogre of Interest 4 campaign when we ran it through Backer Kit, because yeah. Backer Kit's doing not just the back end now, they're doing the front end uh, live funding, launch funding of these sorts of things mm -hmm. as well. And we had a pretty good experience with the, the Ogre of Interest 4 campaign with them, so we decided to try that here uh, with the Munchkin Big Box campaign, because it lets us do some integrations like having this live video on the page, and having the launch party ahead of time where you could follow along and a few other features so it was a good experience we wanted to give it another try mm -hmm. and uh, see how it works out for us and uh so far so good we've crested over 2000 2100 backers 2100 backers now Jesus. uh all much good sets are compatible with this big box yeah, so as compatible as they are in general, generally across the board, all Munchkin sets are compatible. Various sets mix better or worse depending on the actual mechanics of the set. Some that are the some that are are more unique and more different than others some don't necessarily just, mix as well. But but rules wise, they're all compatible. Some are just more fun together. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Repka, thanks for joining us. <laughs> I have to go get, I'm sorry guys, I want to stay and see how far this goes, but I have to go get my puppy from daycare before they close. Yep. So, <laughs> so thank you so Repka, much. Thanks for hanging out with us. We thank appreciate you being here.
Thank you so much, guys. I'm so excited to see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. All right, so let's see. We can answer a few more questions. It's bad I want acrylic counters to use for something. I don't even know what they use for. I just like having shinies in front of me. Let's, we all like shiny things and, and, and math rocks and click clocks and all sorts of stuff. Bring the puppy to the chat. Well, I think she's got to go get, get it. So she's got to go get the puppy. Uh, let's see if we have anything else that is... We got any other pokes from people. I need things like, hey, you forgot to say that. Say this thing. I have not seen anything. Yeah, I think we're doing all right. I think Daryl's in here with us, so he's he's uh, keeping us he's, honest he's on been things. Handling, uh, quite a lot of these questions as we go. Will this video be available anywhere after the live stream? Why, yes. Yeah, we should. Uh, we're we're streaming this on Twitch, and we will export it afterwards. So we'll throw this over on our YouTube channel. Uh, should be up. Uh, it's gonna be larger than usual, so it'll take a little longer to process. But we should still be able to have it up tomorrow at some point on the YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash Steve Jackson Games. Look us up over there. And uh, you can find all of our, our past live streams go up over there. Daryl's asking if we'll cut it up into different segments. I think that'll be possible. We cut John's interview specifically. Yeah, we just put his up separately. Uh yeah, we we'll put it as a we'll call it as a separate one. Um like we'll put it the the whole stream up, but we can cut just the interview segment out as well. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that's possible. Uh, we were considering playing Munchkin Digital on this, but we're also nearing the end of the time we kind of set aside for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're probably not going to do that today, but because uh, um, we we thought some things are going to take less time than they did, and we didn't know uh, how much time we would need to fill. But you guys have been awesome in in asking questions for us, and John hung out. And talked with us for quite a while and we got some more stories in uh actually before we wrap up do you have a couple more of those letters that got sent in i want to make sure we get read uh let's see so we stopped here uh so a couple more a couple more munchkin using some munchkin memories from fans that got sent in uh francis at last year's dorkstock all but one player was at level nine the level eight player kicked open a door revealing a monster the player to her left added a monster that didn't require a wandering monster card, and the player to her right, her partner, put a card forcing her to accept his help. None of the players involved realized until the combat was resolved that she would be gaining two levels and winning as the results. <laughs> I've done that. One or been the person to add the monsters unwittingly? Both. <laughs> I've definitely done both of those things. Uh, let's see, from Marcus. Midnight Epic Munchkin Madness. The final round of a convention tournament that I'd organized with eight players since I had a very large deck, basic with five supplements, several foil packs, and special cards. And no idea how complicated it would get. At 3.30 a.m., we had a table with everyone at level 18 or 19 with lots of gear, all getting rather sleepy but still keen on finishing. One fellow took the initiative and looked for trouble with an unbeatable deadly monster. After defeat... Rocks fall, everyone dies card was played by the victim, which meant all the loot was gone, nothing salvaged. The next player draws his hand, finds a level 3 monster, which is smashed easily since no one has cards to interfere and wins the game. All players are lightly boggled, but see this as an excellent play, prizes are awarded, and we all head to bed. Uh, let's see. I'm not forgetting chat here. No oh, idea. Munchkin Judge Dread. Yeah, we made that. We, uh, made, we, we made that Apocalypse one. Apocalypse Judge Dread. Yeah, Munchkin Apocalypse Judge Dread. We have it. I, I put a link in the chat. You can go check it out. There we go. Might still be available in your local store. It's a, it's a small set, but we, it's in there. Uh, someone would like a bigger version. Yes, that would be cool. Uh, let's see. I agree. Munchkin Fallout would be awesome. The show was great. Love no no spoilers. I'm only I'm only one episode in so far. It's great, Jimmy. That's the only spoiler you need. I've I've, I've played like about half an hour of Fallout Four, and a very 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 early test of the original, like an early alpha preview of the the original Fallout. That's my total experience of Fallout. And so so far the show is great. You don't yeah you not, you don't need to have played any of the games to enjoy the show. It's it's, it's Right I can I can so. say it, it feels like it fits the vibes of of what I've seen from the game thus far. And I'm a big Walton Goggins fan, and he just kills it 
it's great. He's he's great as the ghoul. I like the I really like the makeup job they did on him. Like they they transformed him enough, but you can still yeah. see that it's the character from the opening. Yeah. Uh, all right, Victor. My little brother Dan came and got our other brother and I, and was like, "Let's go to our local gaming store." There we came across Munchkin Cthulhu. We skimmed the rules like they said to do, and then we proceeded to gang up and pick our pick on our middle brother Brent. Not for any strategic reason, but because we're both jerks. And for that, our brother Brent was undefeated. Even when adding our youngest brother Jared, who took the time to actually read the rules and not just skim them, we still all lost horribly because being jerks was too much fun. Brent to this day is undefeated. Jared and my other brother Dan are now normies playing video games, and I myself am now addicted to tabletop games. Thank you for Munchkin for the memories. Did we get player mats? It's nice to have a place to lay out your equipment. Make custom ones for kids when we got original. Uh, we don't have any play mats with this campaign as of yet, um, but we do have these shared boards, which will have everything that isn't directly in front of your players. So all your all your level counting, your discards, your draw piles. The sideboard has the drawn discard piles. There we go for the dungeons and bosses and side quests. And the main board has all the stuff for your other draw piles and discard piles, your level tracking and everything else. So you'll basically just have to have your own player boards player spaces for this um i don't know that play mats are in the cards for this campaign but daryl's listening so he can uh he can take those words and share them with people who might need to hear them i imagine if, if we have any in stock they'll be added as uh, add-ons if we if we still have any left because we've made them in the past but we still have any left they'll they could, they'll be add-ons but i'm pretty sure we sold through those munchkin cthulhu is essentially the reason there was never a supplement to munchkin impossible it came out soon after it was such a huge hit we pivoted to supporting that one. The yeah, Cthulhu was a, a really great set. I love Munchkin um, Cthulhu. And especially because of all the, the head bonking that you're a cultist, now you're not a cultist, now you're yes. a cultist, now you're not a cultist. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Daryl, they were asking about uh, player play mats for, Munch, for Munchkin to have their own uh, gear set up and everything like that. And I said, I don't think those are in this campaign at this time. We have made some in the past, but I'm pretty sure we're out of stock of them. You can spell distracted. D I S with a squirrel. It's a munchkin memory from Wild. As a level one munchkin, I went looking for trouble. I went up against the level 20 plutonium dragon. Make that level 35 ancient, intelligent, enraged plutonium dragon. I polymorphed it to a parrot and walked away with seven treasures. The rest of the players were in shock. See, they should have they should have wondered when the level one looked for trouble against the level 20 monster. They should have smelled something <laughs> coming there. Like, hmm, seems up to something. All these versions sound interesting. Gotta pace yourself. Yeah, you do. Get your set, play it. Oh, so a lot of times uh, when people are asking me, which, which Munchkin should I get? Which Munchkin should I start with? My answer is, is always either the base one or what's your favorite genre? Because Munchkin is a parody, Core Munchkin is a parody of fantasy role-playing games in general. And so all the jokes and puns and everything else are based off of tropes that you find in that. So if you have a favorite genre of thing or a favorite subject matter that we parodied, you're going to get more of the jokes in that set than the other sets. Like, if you're not a big sci-fi person, I wouldn't recommend you start out with uh, Star Munchkin because you're not going to get the Star Wars and Star Trek and Buck Rogers and other jokes that we're going to be throwing in that one. Whereas if you're a huge pirate person, then Munchkin Booty might be the set for you because all the pirate puns and everything else are going to be in that set. Uh, so it's, a, it's about where you're going to find the most entertainment value out of your favorite subject matter as we start, as long as you can take poking fun at your favorite subject matter, because that's what we do with Munchkin. We poke fun at it. Um, but uh, if, you're, if you're playing Munchkin, you can take fun. You can take fun being, you can take being poked fun at a little bit, yeah. uh, especially your favorite favorite things. Um, so like I said, your my suggestion what to start with is either the core sets, you're getting like what the main base experience is, where there's the most content available, or uh, whichever set is making, is parroting your favorite thing because then you're going to get a lot of those in-jokes and nods that are in that set. 
Yeah, I'd say my favorites are Star Munchkin, Munchkin Cthulhu, Munchkin Apocalypse, and Munchkins and Mazes. Those are my four favorites. Got to run and get some actual work done now. Huge congratulations. Thank you so much, John. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you coming on and talking with us for a while. Have fun with uh, a lot of this new stuff out there. Uh, Wave our thought. <clears throat> so again, the licensed things, we've thought about a lot of those. But uh, for licensed works, those are A, you know, things we can't talk about uh, while we're until they're released. And B, yeah, we've thought about a lot of things, but a lot of those require the people who have those licenses being interested in making a Munchkin a game at all and a Munchkin game and then, you know, approaching us on it. Um, so while those things can happen, uh, and, and we've thought about tons of them, uh, there's a reason why a lot of times we just do generic subject matter, like we do sci-fi instead of a specific sci-fi thing. Um, and at the core, we're parodying various genres of role-playing games to start with and branching out from there. So you've got fantasy, horror, sci-fi, uh, uh, pirates, seafaring, steampunk. You know, a lot of those things are, a lot of these uh, specific things like Lord of the Rings heavily inspired, the, you know, the creation of the whole D&D style universes and everything. So you're going to get a lot of the stuff that you would see. Uh, and one of those sets like Pathfinder was one where, when we did that set, uh, we you know, we talked to Paizo, and we talked about doing their set, and we, we both said it would be a good idea. But what we did is because it is set in a and d style universe, you know, that same fantasy role-playing universe where we already have the warriors and wizards and thieves and rogues mm -hmm. of Munchkin. Uh, so the approach we took when we went to do Pathfinder is, so, well, we've got the core set, the fantasy already, which is what you guys are. So we made it more specific when we did theirs, and we went with like the witch, the alchemist, the, uh, hell, and it, knights. the hell knights, you know, a lot of their specific classes that you find in their world. And then added into that, <clears throat> instead of the races, which were very similar to typical fantasy races, we went with the other big feature in, in the Pathfinder universe, which is the, the guilds that you can be in. Mm. The Pathfinder's Guild, the, uh, uh, it's not the White Lotus, the, it's the Red Lotus Assassins. Oh, it's been a while since I've looked. Uh, but, but all the different factions that you could join in the Pathfinder universe. You could have a class and a faction, and then from core fantasy, you could have the other classes or you know, the races and mix it together that way to make what would be, you know, another fantasy set uh, stand kind of stand on its own as a have a more unique flavor to it. All right, team, need to go finish some end of the day stuff. All right, Meredith, thank you for hanging out. We appreciate you hanging out with us and keeping us up to date with stuff. Uh, once we play the classic Munchkin with a fixed dungeon, where you choose others, genders, name yourself, and everyone calls you by your correct name or loses the level, we also had a few drinks playing. We played nine and a half hours till one became level ten. That is a marathon game. Goodness. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think, folks, we have crossed the three-hour mark here, and we need to start wrapping stuff up on this end. So we're going to go back over the campaign one more time to make sure if you've been hanging out or if you're just getting here. Um, We'll drop a link over to the, the Backer Kit Project right there. And uh, so this is for the Munchkin Big Box, which is a big box of Munchkin. Going to be roughly similar to the size of our old Munchkin Monster Boxes. Uh, it's going to hold over, it's going to have over 650 cards included with it, including the full sets of the Munchkin Core Set, Munchkin 2 Unnatural Axe, Munchkin 3 Clerical Errors, Munchkin 6 Double Dungeons, which adds the dungeon cards that affect everybody at the table. Munchkin Bosses, which adds boss monsters you can fight. Munchkin Side Quests and Munchkin Side Quests 2, which both add uh, alternate quests that you can do to progress yourselves in the game, get towards level 10, and win. And 50 new Munchkin cards. Uh, so that's going to be the cards that come in it. Also going to have the box designed to hold over 2,000 cards and game accessories. 14 illustrated card dividers, a game board. I'm running through these brains trying to keep up with these. So there's a lot of the contents. Trying to unlock it. <laughs> there's a lot of the contents that are coming with this set. And the, the art there is a is a red box with some Munchkin art on it. Um, the stickers. Munchkin stickers will be in there. The card dividers there are 12 standees, which I think have been upgraded via pledges already to be uh, wooden meeples now. Two kilometers, one to track you, one to track the monsters, a spike pin and a spike enamel pin and another enamel pin, which is going to be unlocked via a pole, which one we're going to do. 
a special bookmark. Uh, six dice in different colors, and we've upgraded the size in those at least once already. A redesigned consolidated rule book. I'll get the standees, two sets of standees bases, a playable bookmark, which is there, the yellow pen, and the stickers. And then the main board and the sideboard to hold all of your cards. Uh, so that is what is coming in with the base level pledge. We've already upgraded some of those components via the stretch goals so far. Uh, we've got more stretch goals in the works as you guys unlock them. We are currently sitting at a whopping 2,179 backers. And we just crossed over the $300,000 mark on backing this. So we're getting close to that $325,000 pledge goal or stretch goal for the next goal, which was, no, not the coin. We already did that one. Uh, upgrading the size of the D6s again to the jumbo D6s. And there are more goals to follow that one. There are some add-ons currently available among uh, on the campaign, which is uh, other Munchkin items that have have uh, John's art in them. Because we're doing focusing all the set is on John Kavalik's art. Uh, there will be more accessories and add-ons added after the closure of the campaign. So when you when the campaign closes and you go to finalize your pledges, there will be more add-ons in the store at that time for other accessories and things. So we'll be adding more. Uh, that are available once the campaign closes that you can add to your pledge after the fact. Uh, we're going to be running this for the next 28 days, so we'll come back and update you on how it goes. Uh, but I want to thank all of you for joining us here and hanging out with us for this launch. We're very excited about this project. It's a big box of Munchkin. It's going to look awesome. It's going to have a ton of stuff in it. I really want a few of those things myself. I'm gonna, I definitely want one of those coins and some of those pins. Yep. Uh, and. Uh, Let's see who all have been or the causes. That's a great set. Thanks for joining us. Any thoughts on upgrading the playboards to neoprene mats with stretch goals? Looks uh, like no. Yeah, you know, neoprene mats, yeah, the mats used to cost us, but Daryl says neoprene's actually split in price. The mats that used to cost us $4 are closer to $12 now in some cases. So those boards will probably be, uh, the boards that are in there will probably be the standard uh, chipboard boards, you know, cardboard and chipboard boards with the fold out, which you're seeing in the Munchkin Deluxe sets. Uh, we'll just have the main board and the sideboard for the um, dungeons and bosses and side quests. Can we get a stretch goal that's two-thirds of the pins from the first, two-thirds of the pins of the first goal, and then two of three pins of the first goal, and three of three? Uh, we'll see. I'm pretty sure they've got these stretch goals planned out ahead of time. So uh, if Daryl wants to make new ones to steep them in, he can talk to people. They can decide if they're going to add any extras. But I know they've got a list of them. That, uh, how far can I see on this? I have an older document. I think, uh, I think we're only as far as I can see, so I can't see any of the newer stuff yet. Um, but there's gonna be some cool stuff in there, and some of it is, uh, if you look, if you're looking through it, some of them say that they, uh, go in the box, which means it's gonna improve the what comes in the box. Some say it's exclusive to backers only, which means. Only the backers of this campaign are going to get it. Backer kit exclusive or added to big box are the two ways we're, we're denoting those. And some of the backer kit exclusives may be available as add-ons later, depending on quantities available and how many people back them and that sort of thing. You'll have to watch for more details on that. Well, we all want it all. It's Munchkin stuff. We've got to have all the things. Yes. The opinion you want is trailing badly in the poll. Well, dear, we're glad the choice is so hard. Well, maybe, maybe we'll, well, if it's closer or, or there's a lot of feedback, maybe we can uh, uh, have more options available later. But keep an eye on this, folks. We will be updating you. Uh, Daryl's going to be keeping close tabs on all this for uh, the next 28 days. And uh, we appreciate you all hanging out here with us. We will be here. And join our Discord if you want to hang out and get more talk, chat with us and stuff. Uh, we're in and out of there. Um, a lot of you have joined with this campaign. It's glad to see so many of you logging in and joining us over there. Uh, we will be hanging out in there. We will be back here next week at 2 p.m. Central Time, which is you know the same time this campaign launched. Uh, for more SJ Games Live, we'll be in studio with something else next week. 
and probably will we'll almost certainly update you on the state of uh, the Dr. Kit campaign during that as well. Well, I thank everybody for joining us. Revka, John, uh, Daryl, Meredith, Brandon, thank you all for hanging out and joining us and, and keeping everybody entertained. Thank you all for coming and hanging out with us as well. We'll see you next week on SJ Games Live. Thank you so much for making this campaign kick off so great, everybody. Take care.